Okay, hey, today is it, the finale. Welcome, well, valuable content, you guys, that others would be charging you thousands and thousands of dollars for. And I got no problem with that. Long as you get a return on your investment, I have no problem with charging because I'm thankful for the gurus that charged me to attend their training. The reason why is I received valuable information that changed my life. I was accustomed to getting a job just like the majority of people. They were taught, get a good job, <clears throat> work 30 years, don't have the, the watch, but get the golden watch. Work for a living, get a job. Work for a living, my parents work for a living, get a job, get a job, get a job. That real estate guru, my uncle, those teachers that charged those teachers that said hey look I got a program that can change your life it's gonna cost you X number of dollars sign up I am so thankful that they had that program because I was not cut out to work at a job I'm very independent very independent thinker why should I be working for someone else making them rich when I could be working for myself making myself rich? So when I went to this seminar and I seen the guru say, hey, look, buy my course. You could have some nice things in life. You could have cars, trucks. You could have um, a house that you own. You can buy a house. Someone will give you a house that you can have and you don't need credit. You don't need to go the conventional way to buy a house that realtors and bankers are telling you, you don't need to do that. See, conventional thinking is for conventional people. I wasn't a conventional thinker. I thought outside the box. I was the round pig. I wasn't trying to fit into the square pig with the conventional people. I had credit challenges. I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't know if I had any money. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. I was born single parent raised me. My mom raised me. My dad was in my life, but he was in a different state. He didn't throw me the football. I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at my mom. I'm not mad at anybody because the both of them is what made me who I am today. See, I'm unconventional, you guys. I didn't come from parents that, you know, graduated from college. They had jobs. They did the best they could for the time they had. Unconventional is who I am. I was working with someone the other day and they says, hey, Terry, before we want you to teach our people how to invest and build wealth about real estate, about money, about estate planning, about debt free living. First of all, we want to teach them how to budget their checkbook. We want to teach them how to save. I said, for what? Why do you need all that stuff? As a real estate investor, when you invest, all you want to do is learn how to multiply, increase, build wealth, and make money. That's all you have to have and a desire, a strong burning desire to be successful financially dealing with real estate. You don't need a savings account. You don't need to worry about your budget. Well, they said they're going to spend their money once they make it. So what? That's what it's for. The money's there to be spent. You don't need all that. Just give me somebody with some motivation that will do what I ask them to do. And we're going to see success. So again, I came from zilch, zero, scratch, nothing. There ain't nothing special about me. I didn't go to college. 
I, I graduated from high school and I wasn't the best student. Not that I got in trouble, but I just didn't understand math, history, and science. For some reason, it didn't relate to me. I knew that I wasn't going to college. My dad wanted me to go to college. I didn't want to go to college. i will go out and get a job. I just thought a little bit differently. But what I realized was I was an entrepreneur. See, I got a different mind, you guys. I have a different mind. I always told my dad that, hey, I just think a little bit differently. And he, you know, he tried to get me to see conventional thinking, but I kept drifting over to the, hey, you know what? I got a different mind. I think a little bit differently. So I hope you guys have received a lot of great information. I know you have, because I've been teaching what I've given you guys. I've been teaching my students that for 19 years. Again, one of my top students, Ron, made $1.2 million from what I just taught you this week. The first four days have been incredible. Today is going to be even more incredible because I believe in abundance. See, I didn't come here to give you guys less. I didn't come here to string you guys out. I didn't come here to play. I didn't come here to do a TEDx talk. I didn't come here to do a Toastmaster talk. I came here to deliver content with abundance and whether you like it or not whether you feel i gave is entirely up to you it's your opinion but i will tell you this i am moving forward in a bigger way right now and this whole week these five days was all meant to me to develop all of my content and package it and give it away to the world and the people that want me, the people that are looking for me, which I'm looking for them, will call me and they will sign up for my coaching program. And I, and I hope to deliver and change their lives financially. COVID has made people pivot. Some of you have been given the sense of urgency. That job wasn't secure. Okay, that job wasn't enough money and or you didn't save enough money and there's some debts that you have see something like that creates a sense of urgency that plan no matter how long you were using that plan whether it's five years 10 years 15 years 20 years you've got a real good idea now if what you're doing is working but what you're doing are you happy with it are you happy going into the job living paycheck to paycheck very little savings living on a hundred percent of your check and if you're using credit cards leaving on living on 200 percent up to 200 percent and still got to go into work every day again i'm not talking bad about a job please don't get me wrong i just want to show you a different plan hey what if you can go out and make another 5 10 15 20 25 30 45 50 a hundred thousand dollars 150 200 thousand dollars a million dollars a million dollars from doing real estate as a side business. I guarantee you, that's what you need to be doing also. <laughs> that million dollars made me think, you need to put a million dollars in your calculator. That's your net worth. That's how much money you are gonna have in the bank, okay? You wanna be a millionaire so that you can take care of your family. So again, if you can go out and do real estate as a side hobby, I'm gonna ask you a question. If you had enough money if you had enough money to where you were financially free, would you go to your job? <laughs> and it's funny, people win the lottery, what's the first thing they do? They quit the job. You see, the job is nothing more than a paycheck. That ain't some of your missions. Some of you have missions where you wanna help people. You wanna work with the youth. But you need money to work with the youth. You're gonna wanna feed them, support them, uh, have transportation to take them where they need to go. You wanna be like a role model to them. Some of you are working at the job and doing that. And it's hard, cause you gotta go to work. There's not enough money to fund what you're trying to do. Go out and be successful, become a millionaire, take that money and use it for the good to empower and impact people with your mission. My mission is to teach people financial education, financial literacy about real estate, how they can improve their lives like my life has been improved. <laughs> so again, today is day 
five, you guys. All right, again, get that calculator. I'm not gonna do a bunch of ROI today, but you can do the math. Again, do the math, engage, participate, so you can learn. Just don't sit there and just watch me put you to sleep and hypnotize you. It ain't doing you no good. And sometimes it's the fault of the speaker. But again, I've been putting papers up. I've been putting the calculator up. I'm going to show you some things to keep you engaged, but you must use those things. And then as I become your coach, I will tell you how to do those things and you go out and you will see success. Okay, you'll see success. So first thing again, get your calculator, put a million into it and stick around, stick around to the end because I'm going to talk to you guys about joining my coaching program. I've given you content. I've given you structure to how I work. I have a digital course that includes much, much more, but the most important thing you will ever get is the ability to talk to me on the phone. A lot of my students are like, I had a guy just called me this week and he says, are we gonna meet personally? It was for a class, are we gonna meet personally? I go, no. So I've never met personally, even before COVID, for these meetings. I used to train students three days one-on-one -on -one, and we would meet face-to-face. -face. But he just wants to have a meeting to talk to about real estate. I said, no, I don't do that, my man. I said, what I do is I coach and I train and I teach people how to invest in real estate. And if you're looking for that, let's continue the conversation. But if you're looking for free information, go to my YouTube page. I got 325 videos. Grab your popcorn. Watch me 24-7, 365. That is the free. Or he could have got on a challenge, but he didn't know about the challenge. If you're looking to network, if you're looking to network, and if you're looking to eat nachos on my dime, I don't do that. So you got to tell me what you're looking to do. I said, are you looking for a coach? He goes, you know, uh, I'm a wholesaler out here and I just find the deals are hard and I I'm just going trying to get some information. I said, look, my man, I said, are you looking for a coach? I said, because right now I'm on the phone talking to you and it doesn't sound like me and you a good match. I said, because I'm not in the information business of giving you your fulfillment of how you're going to do stuff and what the economy's doing and what the market's doing and what people think. I'm not into that. Okay. I know what I'm doing. I got 40 years real estate investing experience. So if you're looking for network, I'm going to tell you, I'm not your guy. It's been a pleasure talking to you, but again, if you want to talk about coaching, you can always give me a call back and I'll talk to you about my program. I'll give you the details. I'll let you test drive me, but if you're looking to stay on the phone and beat me out my information, Terry Bonders don't do that. So you got the ability to get on the phone and me and you talk one-on-one. -on -one. You guys have been able to see my training program, but what the problem is, you've got questions. I'm, I got people asking me questions about this, 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 and that. But see, you have questions about your own particular situation. That's what my videos don't answer. That's what this five-day challenge has not been able to answer for you is your personal questions. You get on the phone with me two times a week, eight times a month, a hundred times in a year, and I'm your GPS. I'm your GPS to get you hopefully to that financial position. I can't guarantee it because I don't know what you're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to over deliver. You're going to get more value than you've ever gotten. I'm going to probably be your best mentor that you've ever had. Some of your mentors haven't even given you their phone number. I give you my phone number. That is what is most valuable. Hey, Terry, I'm stuck. Turn right. Hey, Terry, I got a question. Here's the answer. Hey, Terry, what do I do if? Here's the answer. So what I'm doing, I'm condensing time and your money being spent by telling you exactly what needs to be done right then or there. You don't have to go to some book and try to find the answer. You don't have to Google it. You don't have to go to some of these groups and, and type in, hi, how do you do this? How do you do that? And get answers from people that don't know what they're doing. I'm an expert. I'm an authority at what I do. <laughs> hey, I'm getting warmed up now. When your stomach started moving and my hair started bobbing, that means I'm getting excited. We're going to talk about the seven ways to profit. The seven exit strategies 
to profit buying notes. Now I say seven because I'm gonna give you seven today, but I actually gave you a bonus yesterday. I actually showed you guys how to flip notes with no cash, no credit, okay? You found someone to put up $10,000 to buy a note, you flipped that note and your money partner made Two hundred and seventy-seven percent ROI, and why do they want to do that deal with you? Why? Because they're only getting one, two, or three at, at the bank. That's the pitch. That's the sale. If you can't convince somebody that you have a great real estate deal that's going to get them two hundred and seventy-seven percent, and they want to keep their money in the bank at one, two, and three, that's either your fault or they're not interested in getting a better return but your job if you have no money if you have no cash if you have no dollars of strillers <laughs> or scratch you need some knowledge you need the knowledge of what i am doing to teach you how to do this without money right plus you need my support i'm going to teach you but you need my 100% support to back you up I coach you teach you train you mentor you and I support you 100% that's what my coaching program is about so I showed you how you can do this deal split the profits 50 50 you don't even have to split the profits 50 50 if you don't like if you just want to get a fee hey just give me 5,000 feet you can have the rest or you can do a combination hey give me two thousand dollars just for bringing the deal and then let's split the profits 50 50 60 40 70 30. Woo, it's endless you guys the possibilities of real estate what you guys see is all these different things happening again my 40 years experience 19 years of teaching i've got this figured out I've got it figured out and you need someone like me to help you guys. You need someone like me to help you get it figured out. Right. So again, we're going to talk about, oops, I put that wrong paper. The seven ways to profit, the seven exit strategies. I'm going to talk to you about foreclosure costs that are involved and we're going to do a foreclosure auction. We are going to do a foreclosure auction auction see I've never seen anybody teach about the auction if someone has a course on notes you need to know about the auction because guess what happens when an owner doesn't pay guess what the property's got to go to foreclosure well what can happen at the auction I need to know that when I buy the note first of all before I buy the note I need to look down the line and say okay this house is going to foreclosure what position am I going to be in? How could I win? How could I lose? What's the upside? What's the downside? I always have to be worried about the risk. So we're going to do a foreclosure auction. And again, I've never seen anybody teach about it. I'm going to conduct one right here with me and you. And I'll show you my thinking process. I'll show you my intellectual property of how I think this whole thing through i've already got it figured out it's on a system already everything is already built ready done it's like owning a mcdonald's franchise they say hey look it's going to cost you x but you're going to come to mcdonald's university we're going to teach you how to flip this burger every single detail you need to know about opening up a mcdonald's then you go out you open up the mcdonald's you see the yellow golden arches people pull in to McDonald's because of McDonald's name that's the way my real estate system is I've got it all figured out I built it from scratch I develop all the content I do all the teaching I develop the software I develop the spreadsheets I develop the videos everything all you got to do is plug in all you got to do is plug in so let's get this party started Yesterday, again, there's so much to teach, but I want to go back to the KPIs, okay? The K 
key performance indicators and I want to share with you guys if you have your calculator now is the time for you to pull it out or you may want to wait till I'm finished and still pay attention and come back because I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining ROI but I want to show you guys I actually bought six notes from a bank okay I gave the bank four thousand dollars I got back thirty thousand I gave bank eight thousand got back forty seven thousand gave the bank seventy five hundred dollars I got back forty nine thousand if I'm not correct I gave the bank ten thousand and got forty that's the deal we've been talking about for the last five days I gave the bank twelve hundred dollars and I got back ninety two hundred that was the first note I ever bought it was a third mortgage that was a 768% ROI on my first note. I didn't know what the heck was doing. I didn't do anything. They called me and said the house is being sold one year later. I paid $1,200 for the third note. I got back $9,200. I gave the bank $3,000, got back $10,007. Overall, I gave the bank $33,700. I got back $185,900 for six notes six notes six notes that I bought from the bank I gave the bank 33 7 I got back 185 9 I want to show you the KPIs of what that looks like kind of early in the morning and the Sun is glaring into my eyes and the screen which has been doing all week I'm gonna figure it out <laughs> so here's the KPIs from buying these second loans from the bank. $185,900 was the value. My offer, I didn't buy these as a package, I bought them as individuals. Total, I gave them $33,700. I paid an average of five and a half cents on the dollar. The real estate was valued at a dollar. I paid five cents from buying it from the bank. My ROI is 551%. The average profit of each deal was over $30,000. $30,983 if I can see it correctly on my screen. $30,983 each note average of profit. buying from the banks buying from the banks you guys this is a program that not very many people even know about let alone understand so there is no competition most people will tell you don't buy seconds and they don't tell you why it's just something somebody heard somebody told them what they believe with their lack of knowledge Seconds are dangerous, but they are. If you don't know what you're doing, like anything else, if you don't know what you're doing, it's dangerous. Anything is dangerous when you don't know what you're doing. But does it look like I know what I'm doing? Five days I've been sitting here telling you guys about this, 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 that. This is how it works, putting it in the calculator so you can see it. I'm not one of those guys that does not know what he's doing. I'm a professional, I'm an expert, I'm an industry leading expert in this niche and I've been doing it since 2001 all across the United States. Again, I've done it in California, Nevada and Arizona, Illinois, Florida and New York. Six markets that I've been working in, okay, doing this business. I want to show you guys something. I worked with a bank. They had 174 first loans, 174 first loans. I was working with a bank in California that had 174 first loans that were non-performing. They had a value of $40 million. I ain't got that type of money, you guys. So what did I do? I found a hedge fund. I found a hedge fund that had a track record of buying packages from banks they were serious buyers they had already performed before they'd already bought from the FDIC so I said look why don't you flip those 174 loans to a hedge fund and get yourself a 1% finders fee I'm gonna show you the KPIs <laughs> I didn't learn all this stuff 
until I started working with the hedge fund. Oh my gosh, the intelligence, the thinking is incredible. And I got to be a part of that. It changed my life. So I stopped looking at things the way I used to and started thinking like a hedge fund. So again, the hedge fund on these 174 loans, the value was 40 million. The hedge fund offered 22 million dollars for that 40 million package. You guys, that's a discount. When you buy in notes that are non-performing, we go for discounts. That's 55 cents on the dollar was their, their offer. They were offering 55 cents on the dollar. Okay, the return on investment, I think is 81. Let me make sure I can't see it. Yes, 81%. Okay, their profit margin was 45%. Okay, my flip fee would have been $220,000 based on that 22 million. The average pro, excuse me, the average price per house was $127,586. Those 174 houses, they were trying to buy the note for $127,586 a piece. I was on the phone with the hedge fund and with the bank going through this transaction. One of my students, Darius, found this deal. Phenomenal, phenomenal, had an awesome time. That deal did not go through because the bank wanted more money. The bank wanted more money, you guys. That's why that deal didn't go through. Beautiful experience. Let me tell you guys this. There's a new wave of foreclosures coming. Okay, and I've been teaching you guys and talking to you about how you can get these foreclosure properties from banks, how you profit from it. California, February 1st, 2021. California only, I don't know your state, where you're calling from, where you're looking at. I don't know what your state, maybe your state's already lifted the moratorium. But again, I talked to you guys about COVID. COVID has caused major problems as you well know major problems i talk about the six d's the six d's are death divorce debt and distress this epidemic has caused chaos and people have real estate people that are in debt they have real estate people that have death in the family they have real estate People that are dealing with distress, have financial anxiety because of COVID, okay? People are divorcing and they have real estate. Now, again, I've already explained this. We're not taking advantage of it. COVID caused this. COVID caused people to lose their jobs, be furloughed. Their jobs are never coming back again. Factories are shut down. Businesses are shut down. It's, the economy has been thrown into chaos and it's gonna be hard to recover. I estimate about five years for things to finally settle down and we can start moving up. But this is the perfect time for real estate investors, I'm pointing at you, I'm talking about you, for real estate investors to profit. Somebody's gonna profit on the real estate. Might as well be you. Money's gonna be made, you might as well put some of your, your name on some of that money. But you gotta understand, you gotta give people solutions. The people that are dealing with death, divorce, distress, and death, you gotta be able to help them with that house. Hey, what do you wanna do with this house? Do you wanna sell it? I'm in a position to buy it. I can close quickly. Do you wanna keep it? I can help you keep your home. Do you just wanna give it away? I can take the home. If they're in foreclosure, you can buy the note. I can do that also. Help them move on with their lives so that they can start fresh. Someone's lost their job. It ain't never coming back again. They have a house. They have to go move in with their children or their parents or in-laws. They can't keep the house. They can't afford the payments. They can't make the payments. What are they going to do with that house? That's your customer. That's the way you should look at it. I don't know if you will, but that's the way you should look at it, okay? Let's talk about this, you guys. 
topic today is boom the seven proper ways to make money and build wealth buying notes from banks we're going to talk about the seven exit strategies how do you make the money on the note let's go back and talk about the house first of all you guys got to understand i told you about this house it had a 230r zero repairs were needed this person had hundred and forty thousand dollars on their first loan it was current they had a second on a 40,000 that one was behind that one was the one they're not making payments on the monthly payment was four hundred fifty four dollars and forty two cents they were 17 payments behind on the bank they owed the bank seven thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars and fourteen cents that's how much they were in arrears there's fifty thousand dollars of equity in this house the owner lost their job is the reason they couldn't make the payments those are the numbers that's what this house looks like the numbers <laughs> okay so again let me do this first on the exit strategies this is step seven in my course step seven the exit strategies Okay, Ron, you go right ahead. Okay, this is this is how I, I wind up meeting you. I had an opportunity to uh, buy a building, but how I, how I went about buying this building is I had a warehouse around the corner from it, and one day I noticed all the grass was rolled up all around it. I said, man, why, 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 they're not taking care of the building. So I did a little investigation, found out that uh, the bank had foreclosed on it and, and, and took possession of the uh, property. So they had an auction and sold off all the equipment, but I wasn't interested in that. I just interested in the property. So what happened is I got a hold of the uh, bank and, and they said, well, and yeah, uh, we're interested in selling property, but we'd rather sell the note. We don't want to sell, you know, you know, the real estate, you know, but you say, but if you can, you can buy this note and, uh, and get back with me so so i said okay um this was on a friday so so i said i don't what in the hell are they talking about a note <laughs> you know so so uh that's when i got on the internet and i happened to run across terry i said terry i need i need a quick tutor on on what a note is so terry terry uh counseled me and and charged me i thought it was a reasonable fee and uh he gave me the ins and outs, but most of all, he gave me the language and gave me the understanding of what a note is. So I called the bank back that, that Tuesday because I had to study up on what, what Terry was uh, had taught me. So I called the bank back Tuesday and uh, had a conversation with them and they say, okay, I said, well, and yeah, I want to, uh, I don't have no problem with buying a note. And um, they say, well, and you, you know, this note is, is, is it's about eight hundred thousand that the uh, person they owe eight hundred fifty thousand. Uh, you you'll take over the note and you just, you just got to collect the money for them. So the bank was really frustrated going into court with this guy, but they said, Ryan, you got to take take the position of us and you just you know you handle it from there. And I said, um, I got no problem with that, but but what my what my understanding is, well, and what you gonna charge me? They said, well, Ryan. Uh, you give us 300000 and um, we think we can make this happen. I said, nah. I said, I tell you what, I offer you 100000 and um, and I I pay the back taxes, which the back taxes was like forty grand. But you got to pay the water bill. And the water bill was about 30000 30, So I said, uh, they said, mm, they start calculating on their calculator and no, Ryan, that won't work for me. And I said, well, then what will work? If you can do 110, 
we can make this work. I said, deal. So I got this building for a hundred and ten thousand. Now, in order to in order to uh, take full possession, so I called up the owner. First of all, I was calling attorneys. And they was giving me all this long runaround stuff, whether we got to go to court, we got to do it, and it was going to be an enormous attorney bill. So I said, I asked the bank, I said, can I talk to the uh, the, the owner of, of, of this note, you know, who possesses this note? He said, yeah, it's your bill. You can do what you want to do. So I called the owner up and say, look, I can make that 850000 go away. If you do a little deed, just sign me the building over. I don't care about the money. So he said, you can make this you can make this debt go away. But I, I say, I understand. That debt is your debt. So it's considered income. So you got to pay the taxes on that. And he said, I, he said, deal. <laughs> the next day we signed a little deed. I got the property. He's happy. I'm happy. We eliminate all those attorney fees. And man, this building... That I that I own today, this building worth around about one point three million. Oh man! I got the only thing I got is I got I did some more renovations to it, but initial I only paid a hundred and I got about a hundred and sixty thousand invested. But the building just just it's another building right down the street from me sold about one point five. Wow. Same square footage. So you're saying but you got 160000 into it, Ron? Yep. Woo -hoo. Yep. Congratulations. And, I, and it's worth about one point. It's worth about 1.3. Wow. And I got, you know, this is a 70,000 square foot facility. Mm. It's 70,000. So, and I got a lot of land around me, too. How much land? So, you got any idea? With that uh, acre? I'm probably sitting on a acre i'm probably sitting on an acre acre wow. of land and then uh um, but this was the opportunity anytime you could spend one one hundred and sixty thousand in, in in your asset the day you sign on it you may you may you know heck uh, a million two on it you know what i'm saying right. you made a lot of money wow you know, so man that, Ron, i'm so excited man the, that's what, what you know, the, the, the information that you shared with me, it, it was a crash course, but heck, I didn't have that time. I think the key thing is when you can go with cash money yep. and do the deals, it's so much easier because now you for real and they looking at that cash and say, hey, I want out. A lot of times they just want out. Wow. You know, so if you can put yourself in position to relieve that pain. That's right. That's, that's a great, great, great position to be in. So what did that do for your business, Ron, to have that building? Because I know I did a little research on you. I ain't never researched before until you sent me that information. And I said, well, let me look at, mm -hmm. look at you. And I see you got a nice little business going. What do you do for the business? What's, what's your business all about? Well, I got, I got about four, four businesses. Mm. One, is, one is I do import-export of auto, auto parts, engine, transmissions. We buy surplus. And for four GM Chrysler or whatever, and then we turn around and sell it, you know, throughout the country. Right. Then I then I have a wholesale distribution business, which we wholesale uh, emerald products to like the schools, the cities, the counties. Mm -hmm. You know, a few of the uh, automotive industrial uh, uh, complexes. And then that's that's another business. And then we do uh, office supplies. But we mostly do hard and hard roll and fine paper. All all the RS paper that you that you get today, your bills and invoices, right. that's coming from us. Wow, that's coming from us. We got we do the RS statewide, and then um, uh, that's that's the other business. Then we do buying commercial uh, real estate. We buy and sell commercial real estate. Right. That's, that's oh my God. My, <laughs> my 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 love but if you know notes is kind of hard yes hard you really gotta find and walk in a position on on those opportunities but you know it's kind of hard to to uh just look and find notes but that's your expertise 
Right. But, now, but you, you could always but go back get, to that same bank, right? You ever, you ever went back to him and say, let's well, do this again? Well, I went back to the same bank, and the guy that I was dealing with, he got transferred into uh, the uh, churches. Yep. So he had, all he was doing is churches. And I didn't really, I looked at three of those, and, and I bid it on some, but that, that never did uh, pan out for me. But I, I, I always love commercial buildings. Right, that's and, good. Uh, that's good, man. That's that's my uh, kind of sweet. That's your forte. Hey, you know what, Ron? Mm -hmm. I know you're a busy guy, but I, I don't know, man. I think we might have to do some seminars if the, if if you got time. But if you don't have time, I get it. I understand. That's my thing. So, but you could easily get out there and tell them just that story, man, and uh, it, it, it'd do really well. I, I'm gonna have to come to Detroit. Are you ever in California? Man, I was there uh, over the Christmas holidays. We uh, rented an Airbnb, and all of us, uh, my family, we all flew down there and tried to enjoy some of that sunshine. Yeah. But yeah, my brother stays there, so so I, I he stay out in the Bay Area. Yeah, that's like close Oakland. to me. That's yeah. Yeah, that's that's the area he stays in. Well, that's where I'm so, going this so. weekend, man. So. When you come back again, I'll wait till you come to me because I know it's cold in Detroit, right? Yeah, man, you don't want to come out. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> hey, you know what, That's though? sure, you don't want to come out. You know what? I it's will so come. But you know what, Terry? Yes, sir. It is so much opportunity, especially <laughs> in what you do and, and you able to, you know, help these folks along. But they got to have... You know, a lot of guys say, well, you you can do this without no money. That's kind of hard. That's what I, my projection. Well, kind of hard to you, do it. You could do it without money, Ron, but you got to have somebody's money. It don't have to be yours. But yeah. you got to be skilled and educated in order to use other people's money to pull this off. Exactly. So exactly. it takes yeah. money. If you right. have the money, it's Not great. Money. If you don't have the money, it, it don't eliminate you, but it makes it just a little bit a little bit more difficult, but it ain't impossible. Exactly. Exactly. I I prefer having having money because uh because I walk in the situations <laughs> and, and 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 back when I sign on that dollar line, yeah. I made I made money the day I signed on that line. Right. You you exactly what I look for and I mean again, you look for me. I, I ain't gonna take you deserve all the credit because you did everything you were supposed to do. And I tell people all the time, I could be the greatest mentor in the world, but if you don't do nothing with it, we'll never know. You exactly. just confirm that, hey, if you go out and you take care of your business and you use real estate, real estate will work. That's what I've been harping exactly. on. That's what I love doing. But you know what, Ron? If, it, it, if I could come there and make this video side by side, I'm telling you, I would come to Detroit I don't care what the weather is because just having this video and you saying what you said, that's called confirmation. You know, right. what I talk about, people say, well, you know, skeptical, con artist, rip off guy. I'm saying, right. no, 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 right. no, no. Look, Ron just told you what he did. Now, Ron, I'm gonna do one more thing and I'm gonna let you go because I know you're busy. Mm -hmm. That one deal could elevate you to millionaire status, right? Just that one deal. No, I am. Okay, I got it. Okay. I, I know what you are, Ron, but I, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to deflect it to that one deal. Just that one commercial deal made you an additional millionaire or a millionaire. Am I right? But I ain't gonna say that. Okay, I'm I know what you. I know. But I just want you to be what modest. Done, what it does, Terry, is, is, is look. It took us a hundred sixty thousand dollar investment, turned it into one point three million. So that made you a millionaire, right? Million. That made you a millionaire, yeah. right? But, okay. But also to also to what it did is, I had a couple of other warehouses that I had staff and personnel in. It allowed me to sell those two warehouses and, and move everybody into this one. So you consolidated. I consolidated. Then from there, it allowed me to buy. I brought. Yeah, but Come I can on. tell you when we off off recording. But you know what? Man, no, no. Man. I'm I'm gonna edit it. I'm gonna edit it, Ron. I'm gonna edit it. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna cut it but, out. But 
I'm gonna cut it out. Yeah, but, but man, I want to know. Man, you know I why, brought, Ron? I brought two more warehouses and mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, all sorts of stuff. Right now, I'm I'm buying a, a church. Mm. Now, in this church, it got office space upstairs, and it got the sanctuary downstairs, and it has two parking lots on each side. Guess what I'm gonna do? What you gonna do with it, Ron? Not that 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 church. I'm gonna be able to pick up about twenty thousand. Mm. Now they ain't in the best of neighborhoods. Oh, I understand. But that's okay. It's coming that's up. Okay. You you know but Detroit. What I'm gonna do? Right. What I'm gonna do with it is creativity makes money. You got now, it. Mm. Money don't make money now. Yep. Let's let's get that straight. Creativity that makes this money. So what I'm gonna do with that church is is it's not gonna be a church any longer. Yep. Where they sanctuary at? I'm going to put about maybe six to eight commercial kitchens in there. Mm. The upstairs is going to be number office space for different businesses. Right. The commercial kitchens going to allow you. How many people you know that can cook real good and oh. but, but just oh. don't have the space to, to go ahead and, and go out professionally Ooh-wee. and do it? Go ahead, Ron. Talk to me. It, it, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of opportunity for for people to rent space, just like you rent rent a uh, shed or storage space, exactly. you rent a part of this kitchen and start your business. You got office space now. You can cater. You can do a whole lot of things with with if you had a commercial space. Because right now, if you're dealing with the public with food, you gotta have it. You gotta produce it out of a commercial kitchen, okay? Or the health department will shut you down. That's right. Yep, you're exactly right. So it gives me the opportunity to make money, but also to give me the opportunity to help other people make money. That's right. And and do it the right way. That's right. And you know what, Ron? If you can so, just show them a little nah, business nah. and show them how to operate it, and they can make some exactly. income, win-win. Everybody wins. Win. Well, everybody wins, but Terry, each kitchen can make around about about each kitchen. I got I got another place going up. Each kitchen can make about ten thousand a month. Mm. Wow! If you rent it all out right, you know you do all the things that you need to do. But hey, Terry, if you fall short of five, yeah, that ain't hateful. Nope, nope. But 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 the 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 idea the ideal thing is being creative and and create different cash flows with that don't tie up all your time. Ron, you know what? That's, Let me go back to this. I need to go back to this because I want to hear it from you. You became a millionaire from one note deal on a commercial building. Is that a yes or a no? No, 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 no. I was there before then. I know, Ron. I know what you're saying. But here's what. I have mm-hmm. a student of mine. She's in uh, um, uh, Maryland. Okay. She went out and bought three notes from the bank. One person owned all three notes, they're probably side by side. She flipped that for $400,000, ain't touched it at all. Made $400,000 on one deal. She increased her net worth to $1.5 million. And so she became a millionaire. What happened to me? I became a millionaire mentor. So that's okay. what I'm trying to get out of you is that one deal, just that one, Ron, made oh, you well, a I mean, millionaire. Over. It made me mo- more. It, it, exactly. it, made me, it made me way more than that. Well, that's what I want to hear because that's what I'm going to start telling people. Look, with what I can teach you, you got the potential to be millionaire, multi-millionaire. But I got to hear oh, from yeah. you. I got to hear from you. And that's what I'm trying to get out. So I get it. Okay. I love the fact you successful. And again, I'm going to edit out the parts so that nobody can reach you. But it's confirmation okay. because you said it. And that's what I want to hear. Ron, tell me how this has helped your family. Because I, I, I left a I left a voicemail on Junior's uh, message machine on accident. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How's this helped your family yeah. out, man? You know, you're already okay. But, you know, what does that do for your son? Yeah. Does he see it? Come on. Tell me a little bit about the family situation. What? Well, it, it allowed me. I got I got two sons. Okay. It allowed me, and this is what I did for for my for my kids. I just don't hand them straight out money. But oh yeah. One son lives in New York, 
and he wanted to open up a studio. So he saved about $20,000. He gave that money to me. I, I invested into real estate. Mm. We brought a house, we, we renovated, flipped it, and he walked it away with $70,000. <laughs> right, you're all right, I love it. And he took, he took that 70000 opened up a studio in New York, and he's in the film and in TV industry, and he's doing real well. Uh, the name of his uh, company is Nexus Studio. Mm -hmm. So they do videos, music, all sorts of stuff. But, you know, he works for people. You know, he works for the, some major players there, doing right. the editing and all that. But then he opened up his own spot, and uh, he ain't look back. No, that's good. He look back. And this is a kid. This is a kid that went out there with three thousand dollars in his pocket. He lived in one of those little uh, incubators where you rent a bed, mm. and you had to have multi showers. So this kid really wanted it bad. And seven years later, man. He living in Manhattan, got his own business, and so wow. he, he, he did good. But it started out, you know. Uh, He's a rag to riches. Started He's a rag to riches right. story. He pulled exactly. himself up by the bootstrap. When you live in a situation like that, but this is America, Ron, and you know right. we can do this business if we apply ourselves. So exactly. I, I'm thrilled, man. I'm thrilled. I'm I'm, I'm so yep. tickled, Ron. I, once yep. you made so that it allowed me. It allowed me. In other words, it uh -huh. allowed me to 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 fund some of my son's projects and allow them to prosper and grow and reinvest that money. And now they out there doing their own thing. My son, that that he worked for me for I think 12 years, 12 or 13 years. Right. He started his own business, and that business became strong enough where he can go out and do it on his own. Man, Ron, so, when you when you made that post yesterday or day before yesterday, I couldn't sleep, yeah. man. I could not sleep because <laughs> I knew you had did good, and I'm going, man. I got to get a hold of Ron, so I started searching you out. You know, Ron, when did you um, when did you buy that building? I can't even remember. I brought it in uh, 2015. 2015. Wow. Yep. Man. Yep. Mm -hmm. I brought it in 2015. And, um, and like I said, man, Terry, man, I caught you on a weekend. And you <laughs> said, you said, Ryan, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you, man. It, 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 I think you charged me 700 bucks. I said, Terry, I don't care. Yeah. I yeah. just need to get educated. Right, and right. You gave me a little crash course, told me what the, what the buzzwords were. And, and you know, talk their language, and uh, and you explain how the notes work. Man, I took it and ran from there. But see, yes, I need, I need you yes, too, Ron. Over the weekend. Yeah, I need you too. Here's the reason why. It was seven hundred bucks to charge you, which I'm okay mm -hmm. with, and you okay with. But if I Yo. take I take what you are saying right now, and I make a video with you, and I go ahead and market that thing the way I'm supposed to. It's 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 you know it's infinity financial wise. I enjoy okay. it because I love to see success, man. I love it. You know, especially when you I can have what, a part you know of what, it. Though, Go ahead. But, but Terry, if uh, <clears throat> if the people would listen to you, and and but I'm more so on that commercial side, right? But the residential side, man, you know, I, I buy residential, but it, it got to be enough where I got to be able to make at least forty, fifty thousand, or it's just not worth my time. Oh, I know it. I know so, what you're saying. You know, the ten, fifteen. I'm not trying to do nothing like that. Yeah, you're not but trying to do a little five thousand wholesale deal. You need. You that's know. like me. I need. I need a hundred percent. I'm not a person that's going to give away for some nickels and dimes. I want wealth. No. I want wealth. I want some money that's going to change lives and do things with me and my family. Yeah, so I, I, I agree with you. I ain't working for peanuts. But, no, no, we shouldn't. And we don't have to. No. We don't have to. No. Nope. So I know, I, 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 I see you over the years, I see you out there networking and doing some things. Right. But I said, man, <laughs> Terry, you start looking at this commercial market. And then this is the other thing, Terry. Once you stay out here and learn, yeah, you know we get ready. I don't know if you realize this, but we get ready to 
the market get ready to correct itself. We get ready to have a hit. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen before we yeah. leave this earth. But here's the thing, Ron. When you own it free and clear, you ain't got no mortgage payment. You can uh, avoid the recession. It may drop in price, but guess what? You ain't over leveraged. You ain't over debted. You sitting pretty exactly. good. Exactly. It's but that's now that's a that's a skill set that that they got to learn from experience. So a lot of people think, okay, see, this is what I look at. They a lot of people think, okay, you got this building, you can go out and borrow. Yeah, I can go out and borrow against it, but now I'm over leveraging myself. That's right. Risk. So what if what if what if I take like that church? I take that church, pay twenty thousand for it, and I put a hundred thousand into it. But the thing is making me fifteen, twenty thousand a month. That's right. I just took a hundred and twenty thousand dollars and made it into a six, seven hundred thousand dollar asset. Right. Exactly. And now that's what is real. Once I get done and and business, Terry, running a business, I can run. I can have a building and and rent it out for say two thousand dollars a month, or I can have a business in there. That can make me thirty thousand a month. That's it. It's all about how you flip it and creativity and do stuff. I much rather partner with someone that got their vision. I call them PhDs, poor, <laughs> hungry, and driven. Yes, sir. I much rather partner with someone like that that don't have the resources but need the opportunity. And there's a lot I of good people the out there like that. Yeah, we have, we can split these resources and man. Mm. But I got a I got a business model that they got to go through. That's right. I got to teach them how to run a business the correct way. That's the McDonald's. They got to go to McDonald's University in order to learn how to flip the burger at you McDonald's University. Right, right. So, hey man, when the next time you come in town and uh, you see you see what I'm doing and what I uh, what's going on, I think. If I show you some of the processes and things, because I don't mind helping Terry, I I really don't. Yeah. So the next time you're in town, you come in town, I'm gonna show you some of the processes, the things, what I'm doing. Oh man! And if you can incorporate some of that stuff, I think you I think you can really take it to the next level. Well, Ryan, you out there? I'm I'm gonna come to you, man. Or either you're gonna come here. We're gonna make a couple of videos, a few videos because I am so excited, man. I tell you, I, I ain't even gonna be able to sleep tonight, Ron. But <laughs> I'm glad you reached out to me, man. This has been, it's, it's now, it's always worthwhile to do what I do because I love it. It's just passion. Just like you, it's passion. Exactly. So we're gonna get together. I'm gonna keep your number and I'm gonna come just because you've blown up and done exactly what I think real estate can do for most people if they just use it. So, man, Ron, thank you, and I ain't gonna hold you much longer. Okay. Um, man, hats off to you, congratulations, a lot of hard work, uh, continued success, and we'll we'll talk soon, buddy. Thanks, man, appreciate it. All right. Take care, mm -hmm. bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Jason, how are you? <laughs> Today is, is October the 21st, and I'm from Michigan, and uh, I'm on my third day of the on-site training. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, thank you for you, your elite mentoring, for sending Terry Bontemps to me for a coach uh, and a mentor. It has been fabulous. And as you may or may not know, when I signed up for the $25,000 coaching program, I, I was a newbie. I didn't know anything about real estate. And I only had like $150 a month budgeted out for marketing. And, and you know, things started happening when he came here because my car broke down the first two days of mentoring. And Jason, it broke down twice. She was supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. She didn't get here until 12, <laughs> Jason. I'm serious. It wouldn't start. 
We were like, oh, I gotta, we got to get a rental car, go to Enterprise. I said, and no worries, though, no worries. We can do this. We can still do it. So I had to spend $85 to, of my $100 or $150 for marketing to fix my car. Then I had to put $20 in the gas tank just to get to Terry. And <laughs> It's not the worst of it yet, Jason. <laughs> so basically, all of my marketing money was gone. No money for marketing, Jason. None. It was in my car. I guess I could have used mine, but it's like, no, that would have been too easy. I keep using hers. <laughs> so, OPM. <laughs> I mean, I, I really didn't know, but after working with Terry, he said, no, that's okay. Uh, he taught me how to do this with no money. I have not spent a dime. Because I don't have any more money for marketing. It's gone. But he showed me how to do this, and that's amazing to me. So on the second day uh, on site, he started role playing with me and teaching me these scripts that he uses to talk to banks. And I was like, Banks? Uh, I'm going to be talking to banks? I don't know how to do that. But he kept teaching me, telling me to smile and. Uh, I was shaking. Smiles and pull Jason to have fun. <laughs> you know, we're going to go into banks, this is what we're going to say, and so forth. Just relax. So we took the information, we went directly to five banks on one street, bank after bank. And then he said, Well, sure, you know, it's your turn. And I, you know, I was like, Well, wait a minute, you just did one, Terry. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm supposed to do the last. That's why I'm but, a teacher and you're uh, a student, so. I went in there <laughs> and I was nervous, but I used the scripts. And you're not going to believe this, but one of those banks, the branch manager, gave me a portfolio of loans. Printed out. I think it's like four pages. Well, you know I what I think? Hey, here it is right here, Jason. That's it. Four pages. Four pages. And it was a portfolio of loans that had 52 REOs, 59 defaulted notes, with a total of 111 properties that I have access to. Thanks to Terry. You talk. <laughs> she does, Jason. She but, does. <laughs> They're valued at $20 million. I've never had anything that had value of $20 million other than my family, which I, which was priceless. But what's even great about it is these are residential and commercial properties in this package. And Terry has a hedge fund that he works with that has $100 million and that may be interested in buying the whole package. And that means I will get 1% of that package, which is $200,000. How much? Two, $200,000. From no money. No money to $200,000. Wow. With three day training, that just amazes me. So I am so excited. <laughs> and uh, once more, we're going to be following up, and I actually have another appointment That's right. with the assistant vice president of a bank on Friday, and I'm like, oh my goodness, Is that tomorrow? what am I going to say? Is that tomorrow or next Friday? Next Friday. Oh, next Friday, good. Next okay. Friday. All right. <laughs> So I don't even know what to say, but Terry is going to prep me, and uh, I just believe that everything is going to work fine. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, uh, Jason, I'm going into these banks, and I'm talking to bank presidents and asset managers. I mean, words I don't even know or didn't even know exist. Senior vice presidents. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that this never would have happened without you sending Terry, especially custom made. <sighs> For me, through your elite mentoring program. So thank you so very much. And as you know, I never even spent any of my marketing money outside of on my car. <laughs> so thank you. That is so cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jason. Jason. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, my experience with my mentor, Terry Bontis, was very, very exciting. It was very informative. And he showed me many things, including how to get leads with no money. Now, I just can't believe that, with no money. I didn't have hardly any money anyway, but he was showing me how to do it with no money. And here's what happened. Uh, I had a budget of $100 for marketing, and I had to have that before Terry arrived. So I told Terry I got about $100 for budgeting. Well. My car broke down the first two days of the mentorship program, and I just couldn't believe it. And I said, Terry, I can't get to you. And so I had to spend $85 to fix my car. That's my marketing money. Then I had to put the rest of the money in the gas tank just to get to Terry. So I didn't have any money for marketing. 
So I show up and I, I meet this mentor for the first time and I was like, man, I don't have any money. So Terry was like, that's okay. And so he was prepared when I got here. He was focused and dedicated. And he showed me how to make and get leads with no money. And I am just like in awe of that. I really am because I didn't think it could be done, especially with my type of budget and what just happened to me. So he went straight to the core of uh, what I needed. And uh, I needed that information. He knew how to deliver with maximum impact. So he considered my lifestyle. He considered my work habits. He considered my family life. And he built a mentorship program around that just for me. It was like tailor-made for me. Somebody was having problems the first two days and no money, no money down, and he went straight there and just helped me from the bottom up. And so I learned the process of making money through Terry. And he, you know, at the end, the third day, this is the third day, I have a portfolio of over $20 million and I can get 1% of that, which is $200,000, from no money, car breaking, breaking down, <laughs> to a mentor who took me by the hand and look at the position I'm in now. Thank you, Terry, so much. These were the best of financial decisions. These were the worst of financial decisions. Two families. To the world, they look the same. Both good families who take care of their responsibilities and follow the rules. But does following the rules always mean following the traditional path to financial mediocrity? One family invests the traditional way. Following the advice of family and friends, they put their money into mutual funds in a volatile stock market. The fund manager shorts the stock, which causes the stock to plummet, and they lose money. With the ups and downs of the market, this method of investing takes them on a roller coaster ride of highs that make them feel wealthier than they actually are. So they spend what they don't have, which is followed by financial lows that bring incredible stress, sadness, and regret for their earlier spending. These downfalls and jumps play havoc with their plans for life and threaten college educations cost vacations, and decimate retirements. The family, having lost a good deal of money in the stock market, panics and pulls their money out. But it's too late. They come away with much less than they started with. Or perhaps they put their money in their local bank, where it sits making money for someone else, while providing very little interest for the family. With record low interest rates being paid on CDs and savings accounts, this interest doesn't even keep pace with inflation. Instead, this family is paying for the privilege of loaning money to their bank that is happy to take their money and loan it out at higher rates and then keep the profit for themselves. The bank then becomes their mortgage lender, loaning their own money back to them at a higher rate than what they are making by investing with their bank. Meanwhile, our other family takes an innovative and proven path that invests expertly selected using an econometric model and is backed by the security of real assets, earning double-digit returns. Not only does this family own real estate well, that is totally hassle-free, but they also invest in private notes, backed 100% by real estate. This forward-thinking family is earning double-digit returns on two proven secure types of investments and growing their wealth while reaping tremendous tax advantages that are only possible with real estate investing. With the guidance of over 30 years of experience in the real estate investment world, this family has expert advice all earned double-digit returns on many secure, successful investments and is growing their family and living the life of their dreams. The traditional investment couple loves their children dearly and wishes they could have had a bigger family. But that was just not financially possible if their children were going to be able to live in the neighborhood with decent public schools able to plan for and finance their own retirement in comfort and ease. 
care for themselves as they did their parents. Investing with Eck provided this family with the income to lead a happy, fulfilling, and active lifestyle that carries into their retired years. They are able to pursue and enjoy the good things in life with their children and grandchildren, such as vacations, travel, and other adventures. You work hard to provide for your family. You deserve to make the most of your money without hassles or worries. You can invest the traditional way and reap traditional financial results that often lead to an uncertain future. Or you can be, we will take the guesswork and frustration out of investing and deliver the wealth building advantages that only real estate investing can provide. Secure, guided expertise. Investments 100% backed by real estate that further reduces risk in an already secure investment vehicle. Call us today to speak with your dedicated real estate consultant and start building your future today. Hey, again, we're talking about that five-day seminar I attended in Jacksonville. Again, the guy that was teaching the class bought and sold over 2,000 houses. That's why I was there. He taught me that if I was really good at foreclosure business, you guys, I would have enough business for the rest of my life. Not only that, but I would have enough business for my daughter's lives also, okay? I'm glad I went to that seminar. Wow, that was freaking impressive. And you know what? He was absolutely right. To this day, I have 20 years experience investing in foreclosure properties all across the United States. I've invested in California, Arizona, Nevada, Illinois, Florida, and New York. Woohoo! Here's what I got to tell you about what I've learned from my years of investing experience that works and will continue to work even after the foreclosure moratorium is lifted. Matter of fact, it's going to work even better, you guys, when the moratorium is lifted. That's why I'm doing this workshop for you, okay? Takeaway number three is called Subject 2, and I will slow down for this video, LOL. <laughs> Have out loud. But next video, I'm going to bring it, so let's go. Subject 2, homeowners will let you take over their existing financing on their home. You will make the payments to the mortgage company on behalf of the owner. Here's my disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer and you should seek one out if you're going to be using this strategy. You will need to know the foreclosure laws of your state and the bank has the right to call the loan due if you don't qualify conventionally, you guys. It's happened to me. The banks want you to qualify conventionally. I had the bank call the loan due on me on one of the properties that I took over subject to. Owner had a gambling problem. They're in debt and their property was in foreclosure. The owner walked away and was never coming back again, you guys. It was going to be sold on the courthouse steps. I took over the property subject to the existing loan. That means I can sell the property, keep all the profits, even though the title and the loan was in the homeowner's name. That's the beauty of taking over subject to. <laughs> Terry, what does all this mean? Pay attention, you guys. Listen close. Get close to me. This house has payments that the owners were obligated to pay the bank. They had two loans, okay, on the property. Let's say they had a first loan of $140,000, the payment's $1,000 a month. Got it? They had a second loan, and the monthly payments were $750 a month. Total payments, $1,750 a month. They were behind $30,000 on their payments, you guys. Owners were not making their payments to the bank. Slow down, Terry, you talk way too fast. Taking over subject to the existing financing, you don't need a credit, a job, real estate license, deal with realtors, or getting loans from banks to acquire the property that's in foreclosure. But you do need the knowledge. You could have wholesale this thing, fixed it, and flipped it, or rented it out, okay? Just like I'm doing to make big profits in real estate. So again, number three takeaway, I thought too. Number three is subject two. You want to market and deal with people who are having problems with the six Ds. The six Ds are debt, debt, divorce, and distress. And when you deal with these type of people that are having problems with their homes, they will give you a discount on their property so you can make some dollars, you guys. <laughs> these homeowners will give you their houses for free. I did say free. Terry, why would somebody give you the house for free? If it's never happened to you guys, I can see why you're skeptical and thinking that no one in their right mind will give your house for free. I've been given at least 10 free houses, you guys. They'll give them away because there's no emotional attachment to the property. Their feelings are no longer emotionally attached to this house. They don't want it anymore. These 
uh, 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 owners had a gambling problem. They're dealing with the D word, which is debt, which led to the homeowner being in foreclosure. They had moved in with their children because they didn't have the 30000 to pay, that they were behind on this mortgage. One more house that I was given to me for free, but the house had debt on it and mortgage payments, $1,750 a month that the owners couldn't make. On this deal, I paid a wholesaler $5,000 for bringing this deal to me. I made $34,968 on the deal. But guess what? The bank called the loan due because they didn't like what I did. So what did the bank do when they called the loan due? They started the foreclosure process on the homeowners. No problem because I knew the civil code. I know the foreclosure laws in California. I'm a leading expert in foreclosures and the number one bank foreclosure uh, mentor in the country. Terry, that's scary. Yep. It's scary if you don't know what you're doing. I've been investing in real estate since 1980, you guys. I've been teaching all across the United States since 2001. My students are making some of the most money per deal in the country, you guys. That's right. That's another takeaway. Get back on track, Terry. In California, Civil Code says that banks have to go by the foreclosure laws in their state. Again, this deal was in California. In California, we have 111 minimum days before the property can be sold on the courthouse steps. That's the law, and I know it. So I had 111 minimum days before the bank could legally take the property. So I decided to sell it before they foreclosed. <laughs> California law is a minimum of 90 days from the notice of default that is filed at the county recorder's office. Then there's a minimum of 21 days from that before the bank can actually auction the property off at the courthouse steps. Nothing less. So there was no need for me to panic. I knew my exit strategy. I've lost two houses of foreclosure, you guys, okay? And I would have gave them to you if you would have gave me a solution to stop from having a foreclosure on my credit part. The deal I just told you about, they didn't get a foreclosure. Again, there was no attachment for me. Okay, if you'd have came around, I would have given those properties to you. I couldn't figure it out. One more house, again, that I've talked earlier that I was given. Again, a wholesaler brought it to me because they didn't have the knowledge I have, and they were happy making a $5,000 finance fee. Everybody was happy. So takeaway number three again, you guys. Subject two, you want to market and deal with people who are having problems. You guys know these six Ds now. Debt, divorce, distress, okay? Again, people are having problems with their homes. We'll give you a discount on your property so you can make some dollars. And that's exactly what I did to make $34,968 on this property and take over subject to. These homeowners will give you their house for free. They'll give it to you for free. Terry, why, why, why? I know you guys have questions. Go back and watch takeaway number one, takeaway number two, and watch this video, takeaway number three, okay? Again, there's no emotional attachment to the property by the owners. They had walked away from their home. They were never gonna return again. I was able to take it over subject to the existing finances, which means what, you guys? This is what it means. You don't need money, credit, a job, real estate license, deal with realtors, get any loans from banks, okay, to acquire the property that's in foreclosure. Again, wholesale it, fix it, flip it, rent it, rent it out of Airbnb it, okay? Assistant living to make some profits. Okay? You don't need money, credit, job, real estate license, you guys. Don't deal with realtors because they don't understand this. Okay, Realtors do not get trained in foreclosure. So takeaway number three is subject to you guys. Hey, this is Terry Bontes wishing you success, health, wealth, happiness, and prosperity. See you later. But this is the perfect time for real estate investors. I'm pointing at you. I'm talking about you for real estate investors to profit. Somebody's going to profit on the real estate. Might as well be you. Money's going to be made. You might as well put some of your, your name on some of that money. But you got to understand, you got to give people solutions. The people that are dealing with death, divorce, distress, and death. You gotta be able to help them with that house. Hey, what do you wanna do with this house? Do you wanna sell it? I'm in a position to buy it. I can close quickly. Do you wanna keep it? I can help you keep your home. Do you just wanna give it away? I can take the home. If they're in foreclosure, you can buy the note. I can do that also. Help them move on with their lives so that they 
can start fresh. Someone's lost their job. It ain't never coming back again. They have a house. They have to go move in with their children or their parents or in-laws. They can't keep the house. They can't afford the payments. They can't make the payments. What are they going to do with that house? That's your customer. That's the way you should look at it. I don't know if you will, but that's the way you should look at it. Okay? Let's talk about this, you guys. Topic today is, boom. The seven proper ways to make money and build wealth buying notes from banks. We're going to talk about the seven exit strategies. How do you make the money on the note? Let's go back and talk about the house. First of all, you guys got to understand. I told you about this house. It had a 230R, zero repairs were needed. This person had $140,000 on their first loan. It was current. They had a second on a 40,000. That one was behind. That one was the one they're not making payments on. The monthly payment was $454.42. They were 17 payments behind on the bank. They owed the bank $7,725.14. That's how much they were in arrears. There's $50,000 of equity in this house. The owner lost their job is the reason they couldn't make the payments. Those are the numbers. That's what this house looks like. The numbers. <laughs> okay, so. Again. Let me do this first. On the exit strategies. This is step seven in my course. Step seven. The exit strategies. One of the ways that I can make my money, if I own that second note, if you own that second note, if the owner doesn't pay and you've tried to work out things, you might have to foreclose on them. But we're gonna use foreclosure last. The reason I'm gonna use foreclosure last is because I'm going to Take you guys through the whole process of foreclosure. Give me a second. Where's my auction at? Well, I was actually looking for my app to show you the foreclosure auction, but can't find it. In my game, my app, Bank Foreclosure Millionaire, I actually have a foreclosure auction on the courthouse steps built into my app called Bank Foreclosure Millionaire. And it's live, but you gotta understand how it works. And most people don't, so you won't understand it until I show and teach it to you. But this deal that we're working on right now is actually in my Bank Foreclosure Millionaire. So, the next Again, we own the second note. We bought it for 10, it's owed 40. So how can you get paid? You can, the owner can refinance their home. The owner can refinance their home. It's an option. I don't know if they can, but it's an option. So if we're owed $40,000, we only paid 10 from it because we bought it from the bank for 10, they can pay us back 40,000. That's how we exit out of the property. So again, if the owner refinances, bam, we'll make $40,000 from a $10,000 investment. That ain't bad. We multiply that money four times. That owner could also sell their home. The owner could sell their home, but they gotta pay the debt. They got to pay the first, they got to pay the second, and we are the second, so we will get paid what we're owed, which again is $40,000 if they sell the home. This owner may decide, we're done. We have no ability to pay, so what we will do, we'll just sign the house over in a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Terry, you can have the house. Don't foreclose on us, so we have a foreclosure on our credit report. We'll just deed this property to you and you can have it. Now, 
what I would do is sell the property what you can do is sell the property we got to pay the first at 140 we're only into it for 10 the property's worth 230 so sell it for 230 pay off the first at 140 our 10 <laughs> comes back to us but we'll count it as debt so it's 150 total debt subtract it from the 230 that's where you need the calculator eighty thousand dollars of profit is what i'll make on this deal if the owner gives me the deed in lieu of foreclosure is that possible yes will it happen i don't know you have to give the owners choices these are solutions that i work with these homeowners and say hey look Here's a choice. You can just deed the property to me. You won't have a foreclosure. So maybe one day down the road, you can come back and buy another house. You let them make the decision. My job is to give them choices. That's what I do. Next, short sale. I discussed this yesterday. Short sale, what does that mean? It means Terry Bontemps. It means you own the note. We're owed 40 thousand dollars we're owed forty thousand but i'm willing to take less i'm willing to take less why because i only paid ten i only paid ten thousand dollars they owe me forty i'm willing to take less to get my money and move on to my next deal maybe so hey homeowner if you can give me twenty five thousand dollars Let's just call it a, a day. I'll give you a discount. I'll knock off $15,000 of what you owe me. You owe me 40, you owe me 40. How about if we just strike a deal? How about if you just give me $25,000? We'll call it a day. Why would I do that, you guys? Come on, you gotta see the math. How much did we pay? How much did I pay? How much did you pay? How much did your, your money partner pay? 10,000. We offer them to give us 25. How much profit will you make? How much profit will I make? I'm gonna make $15,000 and I didn't do anything. I didn't have to go to the owner's house and talk to him. I just did it over the phone. Hey, look, you owe me uh, $40,000. You don't tell him you bought it for 10. <laughs> hey, you owe me 40. I know COVID's been tough on everybody. It's been tough on me too. How about if I do something that benefits you and it benefits me. How about if you give me $25,000? And we'll just call it even. Well, Terry, I don't have $25,000, I got 15. Well, how about if you give me the 15,000 and then maybe we can work something out on the other 10,000 when you get your income taxes? How about if you go to your 401k and take the money out of there? That way you're done with me. You don't have any 454, 42 a month. That's a choice. See, I'm the bank. I make the rules. I'm in control. I create my own economy. I created this from my intelligence because I have a lien on the property. I have an equitable interest in the property. So we just did a short sale. How long did that just take for me to do a short sale on my own property? Two minutes, two minutes because I'm the bank. So again, if we do a short sale, you guys, 25,000, I pay 10, you pay 10, your money partner pay 10, you make 25. That's a nice day. That's a nice day. Now, I did tell you guys the owner has equity in the property of $50,000. So what I could do is offer them some money, cash for keys, if they give me the deed to the property. So the owner has $50,000 of equity. What if I offered them 20 grand? What if I offered them 20 grand because they said, hey, we're out of here, Terry. She's going north, I'm going left. We don't love each other anymore. Uh, we, we can't stay in this house. We can't stand each other. We don't even like the sight of each other. Those things happen. Not my fault, it's COVID's fault. I'm blaming COVID for everything right now because they were doing fine. 
They both had jobs. They were loving each other. COVID hits, they lost their jobs. They're fighting at night because they got bills. Can't make the mortgage payment. Can't pay for the kids' college education. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you are going through this. Financial anxiety because of death, divorce, distress, and debt. I come along and I said, hey, look, I'll give you $20,000 for your equity in this property. She gets 10, you get 10. We all form this solution so that you guys can move on with your lives so that you can start fresh again, separately. At least you got some money. They got $10,000 that they didn't have before. That's the logic and that's why people do things. That $10,000 is needed badly. A, a moving van, a first and last deposit, groceries, whatever it takes. I'm there to help them because otherwise they would have walked away, you guys. They would have walked away, lost the house of foreclosure, lost their equity. I came in with a solution. What do you want to do with your house? We want to sell it. Okay, I have a solution. How about if I give you $20,000 for your equity, ten dollars for her, ten dollars for you, bam, you guys can move on. So what does that look like for me? Again, I got to pay the first of $140,000. There's 20,000 I just gave them, so that's 160. I'm gonna sell it for 230, I make $70,000. Now the reason I threw out $20,000, cash for keys, I wanted to show you guys that I'll make $70,000. But see, I'm not a greedy guy. What if I offered them 30,000? I'd make 60 grand. What if I offered them 40,000 for the 50? I'd make 50 grand. I can give them what I want long as it works for me, long as it works for them. A lot of investors have been taught, hey, just give me the deed. I'm not giving you anything or I might give you 2,500 bucks. Not me. I believe in abundance. I already told you guys, I'm an abundance type person. I'm not trying to be poverty mindset. I don't have a poverty mindset. I want to help them. Maybe they'll write me a testimonial letter thanking me for doing what I'm doing. I want to help them. Yes, I'm helping myself. I'm helping myself and my family because this is what I do as a business, you guys. Woo, this is fun. This is enjoyable. This is why I've been doing this 19 years. No one is telling me how to run my business. I don't have a boss. No one is controlling my destiny. I can make as much as I want or as little as I want. Whatever makes me and my clients happy, that's the keys to success. I can sleep in if I want. I can go to bed at late at night when I want. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing for the last 19 years. How about a loan modification? A loan modification is my favorite bar none. The loan modification says, hey, look, this owner was 17 payments behind. They were 17 payments behind. They owed the bank $7,725 a month. I'm sorry, $7,725 from missing those 17 payments. The bank sold that loan to me for $10,000. I went to the owner and I said, hey, you owe me $7,725. I said, can you give me all that and you can keep your home? They said, no. Terry, my husband was laid off. We don't have no money. I said, okay, you don't have the whole $7,725. Why don't you give me $3,500? Give me half of what you owe. Terry, you got all kinds of wax stuck in your ears. We don't have $3,500, Terry. If we had that type of money, we would have paid the previous bank. I said, okay. What can you do? They said, she told me, her husband is now back working again. So I said, okay, that means you can pay your 454.42, right? She goes, yes. So if I just would have said, okay, we're in October 2020 right now. If you, November 1st, can you start making 454.42? She says, yes. I'm happy with that because I showed you guys previously that the $454.42 <laughs> I didn't think I was going to do calculator today with you guys, but I got to do calculator. 454.42, 42, 
I'm, I'm getting ready to figure out my ROI. And you guys probably already know it because I've done this with you enough times. That's what you're getting a month. You multiply that by 12. That's going to give you this. $5,453.04. If she paid me $454.42 for a whole year, I would get $5,453.04. That's my annual profit. Now I need to divide it by $10,000. So that's my investment. So I'm going to divide it by $10,000. Okay. And I'm going to hit equals. And remember, this is what it is now. You have to move the decimal places two places to the right. You can do it on your own. Or you can multiply by 100 and it'll move for you. However you do math is entirely up to you. I would get a 54% return on my investment. If I just did that deal right there with the owner. Now there was 220 payments remaining on the loan when I bought it. 220 payments remaining that they're supposed to make a 454.42. So I'm going to multiply that by 454.42, right? That's how, many, how much your monthly payments is. Watch this, you guys. This is why I like loan modification. I want that. I want to keep them in their house so that she will pay every single payment. Nothing guarantees they're going to pay every single payment. I know that. But what if they do? Look what I get. 99,000, let's just make it 100, y'all. Come on, let's make it simple. We ain't got to do all this digits and, and commas. $100,000 is what I'll get back in return for allowing this homeowner to keep their house. I invested $10,000 and I'm hoping they pay back $100,000. Leave them in the house. Don't foreclose, don't take their house. Don't make it hard. And what do I do? Every 30 days, I get a check. It's deposited into my bank account. I don't go to Home Depot. I don't go to Lowe's. <laughs> I don't paint that house. I'm not a landlord. I don't deal with tenants. I don't deal with toilets. I don't deal with trash. I don't deal with contractors. All the bank do is get a check, a check, a check. And again, you guys, I'm showing you why banks are the most powerful institutions in the world. These people, okay, are gonna pay me back $100,000. That's an interest, that's interest for the bank and it's my profit. And if you look at every single house in your neighborhood across the world where banks own these mortgages, that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly why banks got rich and are rich and the most powerful institutions in the world. Why don't you become a bank, join them. All right, let's move on. Again, I did not do foreclosure. I'm leading up to it because we're gonna have an auction, you guys. All right, so step number eight, foreclosure cost. like it tell you what let's flip a note you guys let's flip that note let's say the person says okay I'm in I'm in I'll put up the 10,000 I want the three hundred and eighty one dollars I like this deal better give me the three hundred eighteen dollars a month and I'm in I want that 38 percent ROI that mailbox money then you give them this nice little surprise. This note that you bought is worth $40,000. Why don't you try selling it or flipping it? Okay, it's worth 40. Now, what did you guys pay? 10. It's worth 40. You guys paid 10. Man, we can flip it. Let's flip it. Let's flip it. Let's flip it. <laughs> Let's flip the note that you bought for $10,000 for $35,000. Oh! <laughs> Come on, Uncle Terry. You're delivering today. What do you mean? Wait a minute. Something fishy going on. <laughs> ah, Terry, wait a minute, dude. You telling me 
you telling me I can buy that note for 10000 and turn around and flip it to another investor for $35,000? Why on earth, Terry, would anybody be willing to pay that amount of money for a note that's only worth 40? It's only worth 40, Terry. Why? Why would someone pay $35,000 for something that's owed $40,000? Why, Terry? Come on, tell me why. <laughs> hey, secret sauce. I ain't going to tell you. You have to join my coaching program to get that answer. <laughs> Terry defies logic. No one would want to buy it. Why would someone pay $35,000 for something that's owed 40? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand here what I'm about to do. Follow me. In order for you to build and have wealth, you have to know how wealth is built. And real estate is math. You have to know how it's built. If you don't know anything about what I'm getting ready to say and teach you right now, I'm getting ready to teach you why somebody would pay $35,000 for something that's owed 40. If you didn't know how to do that, you could never do it. You could never build wealth doing what I'm getting ready to show you. So again, ladies and gentlemen, you have to know how wealth is built in order for you to have and build wealth. A lot of us, we've seen people go to the job and get a paycheck. We haven't seen people that have wealth and have built wealth and own things and properties and, and, and they own real estate. So what have you done? What have you done in your life? Have you built the wealth or you've done what everybody else has done by going to the job and working paycheck to paycheck? I'm showing you how to build wealth. The most powerful wealth building real estate system in the world is what I'm showing you right now. Notes, mortgages, the most powerful real estate system in the world is notes. I'm getting ready to show it to you. Hang in there. I'm trying to get you a new mindset to think about wealth, money, investing, estate planning, debt-free living, and real estate. Why you must learn how to invest in real estate or else you're going to keep working for money paycheck to paycheck stating i don't have any money i don't have any money it's because you didn't learn how to invest and build wealth it's how banks have become the most powerful and the richest institutions in the world mortgages and notes since day one the bank said hey if you want to buy a house we'll provide the financing you pay a hundred thousand for the house you give us payments of a thousand dollars a month for 30 years so over those 30 years the bank for loaning you a hundred thousand dollars will make two hundred two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's exactly how the bank gets rich the rich don't have jobs, you guys. They don't work for money. They make money work for them. The rich don't work for money. They have money work for them. You guys have heard that. But no one's shown you how that's done. I'm doing it right now. Day number four. I'm showing you how it's done. How do I know? How do I know all this? This ain't conjecture. I ain't making this up. This ain't no Toastmaster speech. This ain't no TED talk. This is what I've been doing for the last 19 years.
I bought my first house when I was 20 years old because my uncle told me, save your money, buy a house, pay it off. Glad I listened to him. I had a mentor in my teenage years, my uncle, who was a real estate investor. I asked him one day, I said, hey, what do you do for a job? I don't have no job. I'm a real estate investor. I own a duplex. I live on one side, the tenant lives on the other side. The tenant pays all of my expenses to live on. I don't need a job, I own real estate. What? What did you just say? My mom, my dad, my uncle, my nieces, my aunts, my friends, my in-laws, they all got jobs. So wait a minute now, you don't have a job? What are you? I'm a real estate investor, all right. Now how does that work again? Look son, pay attention. This property, it's a duplex. I live on one side, tenants on the other side. The tenant pays all of my expenses. They pay my mortgage, they pay my house, uh, my expenses, they pay my food, they pay my groceries, my clothes, my car, my everything. I go, what? What? You don't have to have a job because you own this stuff? He goes, yeah. He says, let me tell you something. You buy one of these, you save your money so you can buy it. I want you to pay it off so you don't have any debt. A as a teenager, what? Don't blow your money. Save your money, buy a house, pay it off so you have no debt. Best advice I've ever had because 2001 the 9-11 bombings, 2008, Great Recession, 2020, I owe no banks, no money on my real estate. I have no debt, no credit card debt, no automobile debt, no student loan debt. I don't owe anybody money. I pay cash. I don't even use credit. I don't even know what my credit score is. I haven't checked on my credit probably in 20 years. <laughs> Understand this, you guys, when I invest my money, I know what return I want and how long it will take to get my money back. Again, I told you guys I bought the note for 10,000. I got a 54% return. I knew that I would get my money in 22 months if I can get that owner to make the 454.42. So why, Terry? Come on, man. Quit holding out on me. Quit holding out on me, Terry Bontips. So why would someone pay $35,000 for something that's only worth 40. Come on, Terry, quit it, man. You got me on edge. I'm on pins and needles. Stop it. <laughs> ah, can you guys tell I'm having fun? I enjoy this. I enjoy teaching. Come on, Terry, let's deliver it. They're paying $35,000 for the income stream. What's the income stream, Terry? Remember, this loan had 220 payments on it, a 454.42. Let me take you back. Let me take you back, y'all. If I can find some of these notes pretty quickly. That one doesn't show it. All right, <clears throat> save us a little time. The reason someone will pay 35,000, especially for a note buyer, is because of those 220 payments that are remaining on the loan at $454 a month. Please multiply 220 remaining payments times 454.42. dollars 
That's if the owner makes every single payment, they will pay back $99,972.40. What are you saying, Terry? That homeowner, because of the loan they signed, they'll be paying $454.42 a month for 220 more months, which is going to round up to be about $100,000. That's what's remaining on this, $100,000. So if you look at that, if I was to invest your money partner, <clears throat> if someone would buy the loan, let's say your money partner put up the 10 grand, right? And they're getting that 38%. And you tell them, how about if we flip that note? How about if we flip that note that you paid 10 for, let's flip it for $35,000. And you tell them, I know, I know, you don't understand why, but let me tell you why. Because the person that will pay $35,000 will want that 220 payments at 454, 42, so they can get $99,972.40 over the loan. What's the ROI? What's the ROI? What's the ROI? That's the question you guys got to be able to answer. Let's do the math. Let's do the math. So let's look at it. You guys are selling that note for $35,000. Let's look at your profit. You bought it for 10, you're getting 35. How much is your profit? I'm gonna fill it in in red here. Put a check mark so you guys can see it. So, bam, automatically you deduct what you paid from the 35, so you guys are going to get a $25,000 profit initially. Up top, I got the wrong hand, right here, 25,000. If you sell the note for 35, you get 25. Wow. All right, now before you can sell that note for 35,000, we have something called seasoning. Seasoning means another note buyer will not want to buy it for 35 unless they see a track record of payments. You bought the note, the homeowner, you bought the note for 10, the homeowner's made six payments to you. So that means it's seasoned. Six payments have been made to you, okay? So let's look at the six payments. The six payments, whoops, of 454.42 have been made to you. So you got six payments of 4 54 42 and that's 27 2727 dollars it's right up under the 25 so you're going to sell it for 35 you're going to get twenty-five thousand dollar profit plus you got six payments of two thousand seven hundred and twenty seven dollars add those two numbers twenty five thousand and two thousand seven hundred twenty seven add those together you guys and that's how much your profit is Twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven dollars. Twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven dollars is your profit for flipping that note for thirty-five grand. But now, what is your ROI? You bought it for ten, and you're making twenty-seven thousand seven hundred twenty-seven dollars. Your profit is twenty-seven thousand. $727, that's your profit. Divided by what you invested. Remember your money partner bought it for 10? Multiply it by 100. 277%! OMG! You guys just made 277% ROI because you bought a note for 10,000, you sold it for 35, and you got six monthly payments of $2,727 for a grand total of $227,727. Oh my gosh, you didn't touch the property. You didn't paint, you didn't fix, you didn't fix any toilets. You didn't go to Home Depot, you didn't hire contractors. You're dealing in the paper, y'all. Y'all dealing in the paper. <laughs> That's why I love this business. Woo -wee. But wait a minute. Terry, you still ain't told me why someone would spend thirty-five thousand dollars to buy something that's worth forty. I told you they want them payments, you guys. Let's look at this. The investor bought it for thirty-five. 
Let's see what their return is. They're buying it for 35. That's their investment. That's their investment. What are they getting for investing $35,000? They're getting the 454.42, right? That's what they're going to get a month, 454.42, and they're going to multiply it by 12. They're going to get that for their yearly investment. They pay 35,000. This is what they get a year, probably 7 years roughly get their money back. Now we got to divide it by the investment. Divided by the $35,000. Got to multiply that by 100. That is their return on investment. 15%. They're getting a 15% ROI for buying it for 35 thousand dollars but you're going Terry that ain't that ain't a whole lot Terry <laughs> 15 percent ain't a whole lot Terry oh boy you didn't got so big and so smart now 15 percent ain't really big for you when you've been hearing me talk about I like to earn 54 my student Holly made 4,444. My student Ryan made 1,090. Oh boy, guess what? 15 is peanuts. How much were they getting from their bank? One, two, or three percent. And you're able to offer someone 15% on ROI by paying $35,000. 15.5% ROI. So again, let's keep looking at this. I'm going down this chart. You're looking over here. If someone paid 35 grand, they're gonna get a 15.58% ROI. How long is it gonna take to get their money back? How long is it gonna take for them to get their $35,000 back? Hmm. That's something I need to know. How long is it going to take me to get my money back? So they invested the thirty-five thousand. Divide that by your monthly payment. It's going to take them seventy-seven months to get their money back. Seventy-seven months to get their money back. Okay, let's put that in. A little bit more than six years to get their money back. Now I'm gonna do some new math for you guys. Okay? Now remember, how many payments were there remaining on the loan when you bought it for 10? That's right, 220. They had to make six payments, okay, to season the loan. So, we're going to do our math. 214 payments remaining on the loan for the person that's trying to buy it for 35000 Then we said it's going to take 77 payments so they can get their investment back. Okay? 77 payments to get the investment back. There's 137 payments remaining. 137 payments remaining. How many of you guys? <laughs> 137. I'm ready to wrap this up. 137 payments remaining. Again, they get a 15%. Let me get my numbers right. 15% ROI over here. It's going to take them 77 months to get their investment back if they pay 35 grand for it. There's 137 payments remaining, you guys. 137 payments remaining. Now, all we have to do is multiply 137 times 454, and that's what the person will be paying $35,000 for. So the math is this. One hundred and thirty seven payments remaining times four fifty four forty two. 
137 times 454.42 sixty-two thousand $255.54 Getting ready to drop the mic. 62,000, gotta put my dollar sign on there so you guys know we ain't talking about just peanuts. $62,255.54. That is why someone will spend $35,000 to buy the note from you. You flipped it. You got a money partner to put up 10000 You guys flipped it and sold it for $35,000. Why would somebody spend $35,000? Because they'll get their money back and there's $62,000 remaining of profit for them. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There's a spreadsheet. That's the numbers. These are facts. You're selling for 35. You're gonna make a $25,000 profit. You seasoned the loan for six months, which got you $2,727 of payments. Your total profit is $27,727. You made a 277% ROI. What's in it for the person that buys it for 35,000? Okay, they get a 15% ROI. It's gonna take them 77 months to get their money back. 137 payments remaining at 454.42. That's gonna produce a profit of $62,255 for the person that you flipped the note to, something you bought for $10,000. Raise the roof, pump your heads all up yes, in the yes. air. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. He feels good. Oh, I see that is like OMG. I got all excited. Woo! I hollered up real loud in my house, my wife. Oh, one of us dudes just got 62. <laughs> Hey, this is why I do what I do, because I just love to see, you know, the success. Oh, man. Thank you for allowing you to pick up the phone 99.9% .9 of the time. Hey, that keeps me out her hair, so I think she don't mind. <laughs> She's like, hey, you want to go, go get us one of them 60 tours so we can go have some fun. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, KJ. Wow. Man, come on, tell me something, you have emotion, what, what, I mean, did you go pick it up, or, you know, what? You know, it's, it's quite tempting when you're at the closing table to have them just wire the funds into your account, I said yeah. no, no, I need a check, I want to see the check, I want to frame the check, I want to show off the check. <laughs> You want to keep that check in your purse because there's a lot more to come. Plus, yes. down the road, that's proof. What you may end up teaching and someone says, hey, show me proof. And we call them shut up checks. That's right. Over 450% ROI. Hey, I'm serious. That's how you great. That's how you become greater than the haters. And that's, right. that's your, you know, again, you already know this, you know, real estate works. We just got to get it to work for you, anybody else. And uh, this is validation. Those out there that want it bad enough. Hey, you can do it too. 
Absolutely. All right. So, I mean, uh, uh, who, who's more excited? You, the husband, or? Uh, <laughs> you know, everyone is so excited around here. My husband's going crazy. Oh, My man. kids are going crazy. Yeah. It, it, it is. It's, it's pretty exciting for all of us. It's a game changer for us. Oh, it is a game changer. I mean, mom is a boss. It truly is a game changer for us. Yes, yes. Come on, talk to me about game changer. What does it do? I mean, how old is your children? Are they able to understand? Eight what and 16? 12. Eight and 12. Eight and 12. And, you know, my kids and my husband, they were instrumental with helping us get that house cleaned up and, and, and things moved out. And so they, they appreciated reaping the rewards wow. from this blessing. So yeah. they were there to see the grass get cut and, and, you know, pulling down all of the things that people left in the house. They were there. You know, trying to get the tenants out of the home. You know, w w the kids were involved from early on. Woo. Hey, what a great role model. What a great way to start showing them how to be entrepreneurs, have ownership, and be the boss. Woo. How old again? That's right. How old again? That's right. Eight and 12. Eight and 12. And I can remember my uncle. Um, I think I was in high school, maybe, yeah, probably high school. And, uh, I knew he was in the real estate and I told him there was a house for sale across from the high school that I went to. He came and bought that house. That left wow. such an impression on me. I never, ever, ever forgot that. That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Yes. So it's a game break. Okay. Uh, are you guys going to dinner? Uh, what's the big we celebration? We did. My husband wanted seafood. I took him out and spent $250 Whoa. on the, the best seafood restaurant this dude can find. And my kids, they ordered up their little, you know, oh. uh, fried shrimp and, and their little ice cream and lemonade. They were just hey, so excited. That wasn't McDonald's. Up. That wasn't McDonald's, no, was it? For no. the <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it was a nice oh. oyster seafood spot in Atlanta. Mm. And give, give me uh, name, we all so dressed up. <laughs> and we went out and celebrated. Oh, come on. Give me the name of the restaurant in case I ever pass it want to go by and see it. Yes, yes. It's actually um, CNS. Um, oyster and seafood, a restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia, near Cumberland Mall. Okay, so all my my Georgia folks, they're gonna be like, yeah, I know what that's happening. We put in that's the car right. section. Yeah, that's, that's my right. Spot. Right in the Kroger, right in the Kroger shopping center. Oh, y'all got all dressed up to the nines. We got dressed up and we went out. They were like, no tennis shoes, no hats. We were like, cool, we coming in. We coming in looking good. Okay? We, we coming good. in looking good. And we sophisticated. We real estate entrepreneurs. Yeah, we. That's right. Oh, That's right. Nice. And, you know, it felt good leaving a 30% tip. You well. know, it was just lovely. <laughs> <laughs> the way I was loving us, <laughs> we started looking for people we could bless. Yeah, right. And he was like, what do y'all do? I need to do something. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You come in with kids and kind of, oh, man, I don't know if I want to wait that table, but no. <laughs> we blessed that young man. Oh, man, that is so great. So now your husband, he had a $250 bill by himself, or was that everybody? No, that was everybody. Okay. That okay. was everybody. He wanted seafood. He wanted something he can dip. He wanted some oysters. He wanted some crabs. You know, he, he wanted shrimp. And he got gumbo. <laughs> he wanted something. He just wanted seafood. And uh, it felt good. It felt really good giving to him. Oh, I tell you, it was a blessing. Of four, you know, from, from February almost to the day, from receiving the title on February 10th to mm -hmm. closing on February, I mean, on June the 7th. It was just, you know, a four-month turnaround to receive such a huge return on our investment was just beautiful to see. Oh, Only in real estate. Man. Only in real estate. Only in real estate. The best business in the world. Man, I'm Agreed. telling you. Now, let me just say this. We're going to just hit one thing. Yes. Talk about the discount. Just talk about the discount you got from yes. the bank. Because, again, I'm getting ready to... Um, I've got a couple projects I'm working on and I'm really emphasizing buying from the bank. So um, just talk about that. Now, if y'all if y'all don't know, KJ's already done a video and talked about everything that she had to do to get this check. So I might give you guys a link back to it, but just give them how much of a discount you got from a bank. Yeah, absolutely. We end up getting a $29,000 discount on that debt. Mm. 
buying so from the bank. The bank was owed how much again? One hundred ninety-five thousand. And you negotiated them down to what? One sixty-six two fifty. Mm. And it was a foreclosure property. That's correct. Mm. <laughs> That's right. And it was an HOA foreclosure, so I had to negotiate with the first. <laughs> now, since the last time I talked to you, have you bought anything else? Because I, I haven't bought anything yet, but I am, I am on my grind every day. <laughs> Yes, I am on my grind every day. Yes, definitely, definitely. Now, you know, I'm so proud of you because I know off and on I've been, you know, uh, talking to you and, you know, you've been in different points and, you know, again, you made that video that, uh, again, that keep your home video, oh, I'm telling you, that, whew, that's a franchise in itself. And the thing of it is, you did it. I mean, did you have a script you were looking at or did you just do that? Just now. No, I, I, you know, I was telling you my experience. That was my experience. It was nothing in front of me. That was my experience. Came from the heart. It came from the heart. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. And you know, I, I, I'm gonna say this. There's a lot of investors out there, and I know there's a lot of investors out there that say they will help a homeowner avoid foreclosure. And 99% of the time, it's about moving them out of the house to sell the property, which I ain't got no problem with I really don't so if I'm a real estate investor like most of these people are and you go to the house and you tell your story and what you've been through and the compassion you have for them there ain't no way that a person's gonna go with someone else because they're gonna be emotionally tied to you I have a student right now, <laughs> I was trading him and he says, you know, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna negotiate, I'm gonna talk about price, I'm gonna make my offer. I said, man, you can't do that with people in foreclosure, they're going through some distress, man. I said, That's you know, right. they're dealing with debt, death, divorce, all kinds of distress, COVID, kids acting crazy, and you're gonna go in there and start talking about you're gonna discount them, man? I said, you know, you better be careful because you're gonna get cussed <laughs> out or ran out and you better hope it's cussed out better than ran out. I said, man. I said, I'd have been like that. And you, you know, you had some low moments. So it takes a special person to go in and want to try to work through solutions. But I know you, you enjoy it. I enjoy it. And the process is great. Need more people like you. Yeah, well, I thank you for teaching me the numbers. It was so important for me to create some equity from the bank. Right. It just made that deal all the more better. I mean, I still would have walked away with mm. making $30,000 on the deal, but to be able to make $65,000, <laughs> you, you know. You doubled your profit. Expenses, yes, absolutely. Just and by I knowing how to discount. 11, you know, into it. You know what I call that? Creating equity out of thin air. I love it. Now, here's that other part, which I, I think you already know this. One day, I don't hope for it to happen, but if houses ever go upside down again, guess what? You ain't got no problem. Reason no why problem. you're going to go in and discount and create equity out of thin air. Yes. And this is something that you will always be able to do because you're always dealing in the distress market. Now, every house is not a distress uh, property, but boy, I love getting a discount <laughs> and I love making extra dollars from that discount. That's right. That's right. I feel amazing to have been taught to know the numbers, especially even in this market today. It's like you don't know until you ask. So you go yeah. in and you ask for that discount. That's right. That's automatic. Yes. <laughs> well, I ain't going to hold you long and I don't even want to make this, you know, a long teaching video. This is just nothing but enthusiasm, excitement. Yes, hey, thank you. Woo. No, thank you. Now, how long have you been? How long? When do you remember the year you started with me? How long has it been? 2016. 2016. Five years. Yes. Wow. Now I know you made some some money in between there, and you did some real estate transactions. But here we are, five years later, you still clocking checks. And COVID, COVID was, you know, COVID didn't stop you. New president didn't stop you. Being stuck in the house, all that stuff. People yeah, call me all the time. Mother dying of cancer, mother going through cancer, oh. and dropping everything for my mother. Yep. And, and, you know, to care for her. So I've gone through life's challenges. But what's been amazing and what I appreciate about you is that 
no matter when I was ready to get back going, you were there for me. Oh, yeah. And so I yeah. appreciate it. So we have those life challenges. As long as we don't stay down and we get back we'll up, get we back up. successful. Hey, we're going to have to live and go through this life anyway, so we might as well make a few checks along the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Need to go to some seafood restaurants and just, hey, write a yeah. check. Write a check. Hey, one of my favorite things to do, I was up in the Bay Area doing a training one time, and I went in to have a steak. And uh, I was at a nice little steak place. I didn't think nothing of it. And told the person, hey, I want to do, uh, you know, I'm a cognac drinker. And that person said, oh, man, we got the best cognac. KJ, why did they say that? <laughs> and I said, okay, what's the price? And I think it was like $2.50 a shot, a half a shot. And I said, well, okay, I'm in a good mood. I think I did some side-ups today. And, uh, oh, KJ, you're talking about an experience. They had like two or three people bring this out, and they had the white gloves on on a silver platter. And people were looking at me like I'm some big shot, right? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it was some Louis XIII. I'm telling you what, the guy come over, he says, hey, this was born in France, and it was age, and the person that made it will never see it because it's going to be blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, just sip it real slow. And I said, I'm going to do that because that's totally That's right. Oh, one more thing. Uh, did you get that truck yet? Not yet. Okay. All right. That's between me and you. We ain't going to share with him. When do you think you're going to get it? You got the idea? Soon come. Okay. A couple of months. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me just let the, the, the rabbit out of the hat. You, you're going to get a truck. Was it 2016? Uh, it's 2017. 2017. No, no, no. 2017. 2016, but yes, I'll, I'll send you a picture of that once I get it. I'm excited. 4150. All right. Hey, y'all enjoy, man. You know, the thing of it is, this is what really gets me excited also is because when you have success, that just makes me feel so good about what I'm doing. And this is, you know, what I've been put on this earth to do is help people, you know, get ahead financially, build some wealth and live a good life. So, Keep on doing it. Go out and get another one. I'm just going to be excited about the next one. And it's going to come to a point where you're making some money. It's like, oh, okay, this is just second nature. But <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you sending me that copy. I'm going to put it on here so these guys can see it. But, uh, wow, I'm so excited for you. And, uh, man, I, I can't wait for the family to end up growing this big old empire. And the kids will probably be running it one day. But it's all because of, you know, you have the foresight and you wanted to make your dreams happen. So congratulations one more time. And I look Thank forward to you. talking to you on next call. Anything else you want to leave me with? Because I'm long-winded. No, Terry. Thank you for being a great coach. Oh, I'll stop it now. I'm going to bust out in some tears. Here. <laughs> Get my happy <laughs> dance on. My life. Hey, Thank you. hey, my daughter had this thing. Go, oh, I can't even do it now. <laughs> some kind of celebration horn. But all right, KJ. Hey, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. You too. Bye. Time you get an opportunity to talk to somebody, talk to them. When you get an opportunity to do something, do it. It sounds like you're a, a relationship builder. Now, did the same bank did they own all three properties? No. Okay. So yeah, they different ways. That's incredible, Holly. I talked to so many investors that said, "Terry, that doesn't work." We've tried. We've tried. Some of those people are on the line tonight. But you did it with how many different banks, Holly? Two different banks. Two different banks, and you bought it for three thousand. How long were those properties sitting? Do you have any idea? Um, for twelve years. Those properties have been sitting vacant for twelve years. Correct. Wow! And you come right in and do a deal and walk away with 
$400,000. But I did my research, and that's the deal. I did my research, and I knew what they were worth, and I didn't know the condition on the inside because you can't go inside, you know, not until you have the right to walk into the property. Now, did you buy those notes without seeing the property totally? I did a drive-by. Good. So you never went inside, but you still bought them anyway? Correct. And you probably did that based on your calculations and your analysis that says, you know what, these properties are worth X number of dollars. If I can get it for X, that means I'm going to make X. Exactly. And I made much more than I anticipated I was going to make. Incredible. Holly, let's talk about the cost of your education. Now, I know when I met you in Las Vegas, you had spent how much to learn this business? I spent $25,000. Okay, you guys. Holly spent $25,000 to get educated to make the type of money she's making. Now, there's an old saying, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. It's the best money I ever spent. I met Terry in Las Vegas. Went to... Um, a training class there. Terry was there. Had the good fortune to go out to dinner with him. And then I think we stayed up until after midnight talking real estate. And when I came back from that seminar, Terry was the person I called because I knew he had what I wanted. And, yeah, the seminar covered a lot of different things. Terry had what I wanted. Let me ask you a question, Holly. It's a no-brainer. I know it is. Would you pay double knowing what you know now with yes. the money you made so far? Yes. Wow. Could you imagine looking back and just saying, you know what, $25,000 was way too much money for me to spend to learn? I know I was like that. I know when I learned uh, real estate, it was always expensive. It was always mm -hmm. expensive. But I look back, Holly, on my education now, and I'm going, man, I would gladly double, triple and pay more. Because now I have it. And that cost that I paid was so irrelevant. But you have to get a system that works. It sounds like you have one. Exactly. So you're saying if I charge $10,000 for a mentoring program, it would be worth it? Absolutely. About fifteen. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I've got to go for 20 Can I hear 20 Can I hear 20 <laughs> <laughs> I'm Thanks. telling you guys, Harry explains this so well. He helps you through it. He's on the line with you when you call the bank the first time. And, I mean, Terry did all of that for me. Some, after we did our first one, I'm a self-starter. I'm an individual who kicks myself in the butt every day and says, got to do it. You know, this is what I want to do. I'm going to make it work. Terry did not help me negotiate the $3,000 deal or the $2,000 deal or the $7,500 deal that I did that were, I mean, I'm, my average right now on all the notes I've bought is three cents on a dollar. How much is it? Three. Three cents on a dollar. The average. Okay? Wow. And, you know, Terry wasn't with me on all of those. Terry laughed at me a couple times. But I'm an old salesman from long time back. And, you know, you have to know how to work your deal. My deal at this point was I wanted to get it for as cheap as possible. If I didn't insult them, then I wasn't really doing my job. Hey, and Holly, you have you to know find what? the I, right one. Let me, let me just stop you right there. I was talking <laughs> to a person today, even last night, that I'm working on a deal on a million-dollar house. The bank mm -hmm. has a note. Right. And those were the exact words I told her. If my offer doesn't make them piss, doesn't piss them off, I offer too much. And she's probably smiling right now. Robin, I know you're smiling. <laughs> Just like they say, the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. You heard Holly say the same thing. Exactly. Holly, you know, I'm not going to take all the credit because you were the one that took massive action to improve your life. And that's the difference between you and other people that I teach. That's the difference between the winners and the losers of life. You took massive action and you were willing to risk it all. Robert Kennedy said something. He says, if you don't want to risk it all, you won't be successful. You were willing to pay the cost necessary to achieve the American dream. And I want to congratulate you. And I want to say you make me very proud. That's why I was so excited about having this call tonight is because, you, yes, you are edifying me. And that's what this call is about. Holly is one of my strongest supporters of how my system works. And I have other people out there. Scott's another one of our students that's done extremely well. 
But I wanted to have this call tonight, again, because I'm going to take this course and I'm going to make it one of the finest courses out there for my students to make a good income and make a good living. Holly, what has motivated you? I know for me it was my daughter. I couldn't afford to send her to college. And I said, you know what, I was sick and tired of being broke. I'm sick and tired of being broke. I'm going back to real estate with a mad passion. What motivated you? There were two things that motivated me. Number one, my mother is um, unfortunately declining into Alzheimer's. I needed to make a move and move my mother so that we could care for her as a family. Um, tremendous uh, influence on this. The second thing was I've been basically self-employed, owned a company with a business partner. You know, business has changed. Uh, the world's changed. That particular business was declining. I was faced with, okay, got to get a job. I'm sorry, I don't want a job. I want to do something and I've got to make, make enough money to help support my mother during the next, could be 20 years, and myself. And I know, knew that I could do it. And after being exposed to the non-performing paper, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I didn't want to try and buy houses and flip them. I didn't want to buy into Hurricane Katrina areas. I didn't want to do any of that. I wanted to buy non-performing paper. And wow. when I found you, Terry, you opened it, you had the key, and gave me the key, and I just ran with it. Yeah, you sure did. I tell you what, I love it. When, you know, it's funny. I love it when a student becomes a teacher. And I've told you all along, there's people out there that want to learn. You're going to make a great teacher because you've got the experience and the drive and desire. You've got what it takes to be Thanks. successful. That's why I'm ready to take on the world, Holly. I needed one good, strong testimonial, and now I'm out there preaching the gospel. A lot of these guys on this phone line know me, and I've been preaching. I'm performing paper and foreclosures for quite a long time, and I know it works. And the people that try to tell me it doesn't, get out of my way. Get exactly. out of my way. <laughs> Holly, you like buying first mortgages, right? I do. Now, I bought mainly second. I only have one first. I bought 25 notes. I only have one first mortgage. You have 18 mortgages. How many of yours are first? Uh, 14. And you have four seconds. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell these guys the distinct advantage you have by owning a first mortgage? Just like the properties in Baltimore. First mortgage, I foreclose, I own the property. I've got a property in Pennsylvania, and that's one thing I've got to tell y'all. Don't be threatened by the fact that maybe in California it's too expensive for you to buy notes. There are so many other places in the country, and I have no fear of going to states that I've never lived in, never been to. I go see the properties, but, you know... I In case you don't know me, my name is Terry Bontemps and I'll be your instructor for today's workshop. I've invited a few of my protégés over to give you their own personal opinion of what they think about my non-performing paper system, which I believe is the number one real estate wealth building system in America. The reason I say it's the number one real estate wealth building system in America is because I'm teaching you how to be the bank. Think about it. Who has the bigger buildings, the banks or the landlords? Banks get rich off collecting interest off their investments. For example, the bank loans out $100,000 over 30 years. The homeowner pays back $225,000 to $250,000. If the bank can do it, we can do it too. Owning that mortgage provides passive cash flow, quick cash, and long-term wealth. I like buying the mortgages that homeowners are not making their payments on. Of course, I'm going to buy that at a discount. So that $100,000 mortgage, I like to buy for $25,000. 
And then I'd like to get the return of 225 to 250,000 back. I hope you're excited and ready to get started on your path to becoming a millionaire just like the bank. There's one more testimonial and I'll return for another sneak preview and then we'll start your training. <laughs> Hi, I'm Martha Loveless. I'm Chuck Loveless, how are you? We met Terry about seven months ago when we started to get involved in the real estate investing business and we tried to do it on our own. We realized after several attempts that we needed some help. So we called on Terry and we told him we needed a coach. We needed a mentor. We needed some help. So Terry and I and Chuck got involved together. And what we found is that after the hands-on training, where he actually took us and took us on very several field trips to the county recorder's office, to the bankruptcy courts, as well as uh, other hands-on training, uh, we started to do this on our own just by following his steps. What we do is about two days a week we spend time down at the county recorder's office doing research on foreclosures as well as looking for second mortgages in the bankruptcy court. After this we take that research home and we start calling the banks and the lenders on those second mortgages and asking them for discounts on the notes. After several attempts, just the other day we got one that said fax me over an offer can't believe how excited we are just after 60 days of training. My name is Scott Sanders. Uh, my wife Melanie and I uh, attended our first real estate uh, investment seminar just this past March. Here it is uh, July of 2005. Um, at this seminar we met uh, Terry Bontemps and were impressed with what he had to say, uh, albeit we were very confused at the time. Um, after clarification of a few things and talking with Terry, uh, um, uh, we were still impressed and liked what we heard and uh, were very interested and uh, got involved with Terry and he's been working with us very closely, uh, mentoring us and um, every time I call him on the phone he, he answers 99% of the time and uh, spends as much time as I need uh, with any questions and uh, uh, helping me get it through my uh, thick skull, how this whole uh, non-performing paper strategy works. Um, we just funded our first deal uh, last June. Uh, we bought a second mortgage uh, that uh, is, has a value of $18,000. Uh, our, our offer of $10,000 was accepted and uh, we now own a mortgage and uh, are working on our exit strategy. We're real excited about that. Um, and today, as a matter of fact, when we're done here, I'm uh, going back to my bank and funding our next deal. Um, this is a little bit bigger one uh, on a property in Utah uh, that the bank actually called me on and uh, gave me all the details. And after analyzing it and, of course, talking with Terry, uh, we, we decided it's a go and it's a good deal. Um, this is a second mortgage worth $52,000 and uh, the uh, lender accepted our offer of thirty. dollars So we're looking at a uh, profit of around $22,000 and uh, another exciting thing. And uh, so we've been real happy when we feel like we're, we're on our way. Um, and Terry's been a big part of that. I, I highly recommend Terry, his system and his mentorship. Okay, so this is one of the deals I was uh, talking to you guys about. Um, you'll, this is the one where I bought it for a thousand bucks or 3,000 bucks. This is the check, uh, 40, I, I would say 40, 45,000. It's actually $48,000. That's the profit we I walked away with. You'll see the date here. This was in 2004. Okay. Let me show you some of the documents here. Now, this is the one I foreclosed on. I try not to foreclose. Remember I asked when George was talking, I said, George, you're giving away my secrets. <laughs> he understands what I'm saying. That's why he was able to get it. That's why he was able to relate. I haven't talked to George. I only knew he did one deal. We were gone from each other. And then he yeah. comes up and says, wow. I didn't, George didn't sit in the class. You know what's really great? I gotta say this. George. Here, where did you sit? George didn't sit down in the class. Did you sit in anybody else's class that taught this? <laughs> what made you go? What drove you, man? You had to do it. Now, see, you guys are very kind. I want to get to the core. I want to be down into his bones. 
Why did you have to do it? <laughs> Let's talk about bones here. Let's not talk about bones. <laughs> Guys, here's the thing is once you find a system that works, you just repeat it. The key is finding the system and I was dying to find a system that very few people were doing. Everybody out there is teaching you the same stuff on foreclosures, the same stuff. This one thing makes you so different that you can, you can be able to get a lot more deals. I'm telling you right now, all you need is two deals a year or less to make a good living on uh, doing this. So this here, this document is a trustee's deed upon sale. This is the document you get when you go to foreclose, when you foreclose on someone. Nobody bid at the, at the uh, sale. You'll see here, the unpaid debt was 105, okay? This is all the unpaid debt on the note that I owned. I owned it for, for, for little, for what, 3,000 bucks, okay? This is what it went for, that's why nobody uh, bid, for, uh, bid on this. Okay. This is the NOD we filed. This is the person I hired to do the foreclosure, okay? It's a friend of mine. And that's, that's the NOD. This was filed in 2003, okay? That's just when I met, after I met Terry, okay? You'll notice here it says, um, the amount of 21,000 is what's unpaid. That was just the unpaid balance, okay? Not the whole note, okay? You'll see my name there. Now, since then, I, I started using corporations. This I did in my name. Okay, this is the one where we filed notice of trustee sale. Now, who does all this work? Do we do all this work? No, the foreclosure company does all, all, all this work, right? I just keep it for record. I'm not sure why, but show off, I guess. <laughs> okay, this is the proof of publication. Okay, that we did all the right publication, all the right stuff the mailing okay this is when we hire the company to do the foreclosure they make you uh, sign this document called substitution of trustee This is the same stuff, guys. This is the same stuff. Here's what's gonna happen. In the next 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, you are fighting a really bad enemy. Who's that enemy? Your mind. Your mind, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, you're skeptical. In the back of your mind, you're thinking all kinds of things. If you don't get a deal in the first 30 days, 60 days, guess what? In the back of your mind, you're gonna start thinking, oh, this doesn't work. Or you're gonna think, oh, this is too much work. I'm telling you something, once you find that deal, all that will go away. You'll become a believer, okay? Once you become a believer, all the doors open up. The key is to set the right mindset from the beginning and be a believer in the, from the beginning. Know, and I mean it, know, make sure every cell in your body knows that you're gonna get a deal. Okay, this stuff works guys the only problem is that are you willing to do the work that's what it boils down to okay i don't know what areas you guys all come from but here's the thing in your area you can systemize it even more because terry gave you the formula there might be some kind of service in your in your area that even gives you additional work or does some some service for you that makes it even more exciting but terry is giving you the formula okay some of you might be slightly confused, and that's okay. That's why Terry is offering a cell phone number, okay? What you guys need to do is do step one. What's step one? Exactly. What are the five questions you ask? Okay, make sure you review your notes and always call Terry, okay? The formula is there. I've known him for 
keep saying four or five years, whatever it is. Whenever I have any question, he's always there to, to, to answer. If I'm working on a deal, he's always there. Anytime I've called him, he's always there. Okay? Okay? So I want you guys to seriously consider being persistent. And I keep saying that. Be persistent. I don't want you guys trying this for a week, two weeks, and say, you know what, I give up. Because once you find that bank, once you find that, that resource, it's all about just turning the, it's all paperwork, guys. It's all paperwork. There is no owning properties. You'll find out, like he said, the last exit strategy, the last one you want to do is, is own the property. You're playing with paper, guys. You're shuffling paper and making money, okay? That's why I like the system is because it's just like being the bank. You're pay, play, uh, playing with paper, okay? There is no tenants, there is none of that stuff. That's the worst case scenario, okay? And I love it, okay? So let's all uh, give him a round of applause. He did a great job. Thank you. Let's change the pattern of taking a seminar, getting excited about it for a week or two weeks, and then just getting, just going on to something else. Let's make this thing work, okay? Let's make it work, and let's see if you guys can make, gain some ground and become successful. The last thing, it hurts me. I had 23 students that joined. Only one left was Holly. Last girl standing, she makes the money. I feel for those other people, they paid 25 grand. That's gone, kissed it goodbye. They gave up. I told them the same thing, keep me forever. I work with Robert Allen. Robert Allen has a group of people. I've worked with 12 of those. Jim and Zinni may be the only ones, there may be two people on the call tonight. I have 12 people, only two on the call tonight from that group. Then I've got 12 of you, 13 of you, George's group. I wonder what's gonna happen a year from now. Who will still be standing? It won't be because I quit on you, it'll be because you what on me. Quit on me. Don't quit. Winners never quit, quitters never win. That's it, let's get out of here. Hey guys, remember I told you about that five day seminar I attended in Jacksonville, Florida? The guy that was teaching the class had bought and sold over 2,000 houses. That's why I was there. He taught me that if I got really good at the foreclosure business, I would have enough business for the rest of my life. Not only that, but I would have enough business for my daughter's lives also. Boy, am I glad I attended. That was freaking impressive, and you know what? He was absolutely right. To this day, I have 20 years experience investing in foreclosure properties all over the United States. I've invested in California, Arizona, Nevada, Illinois, Florida, and New York using those foreclosure strategies I learned. Here's what I'll tell you about what I've learned from my years of investing experience that works and will continue to work even after the foreclosure moratorium is lifted. Matter of fact, it's going to work even better when the moratorium is lifted coming up real soon. Takeaway number two is what I call a free house. I've been given at least 10 free houses from homeowners that didn't want their houses. $1 million of profits from just one house alone. No emotional attachment to their property that you could sometimes take over subject to the existing financing. You don't need no money, credit a job, real estate license, deal with realtors, deal with banks, uh, getting loans, qualifying from properties and foreclosures, but you do need the knowledge. You could have wholesale, flipped it, fixed it, rented it to make big profits on these properties, you guys. So takeaway number two for today is if you want to market and deal, okay, with people who are having problems with six Ds, the six Ds are death, debt, divorce, and distress, and when you deal with these types of people that are having problems with their homes, they'll give you a discount on the property so you can make some money. These homeowners will give you their house for free. I did say free. Terry, why would somebody give you the house for free? If it's never happened to you, I can see why you're skeptical, you guys. Okay? I, I, thinking that no one in their right mind will give you their house away for free. 
Yes, they will. People will give their houses away because there's no emotional attachment to the property, okay? Their feelings, there's no feelings, there's no emotion, okay, to that property. I'm a prime example. I've lost two houses to foreclosure, and I would have gave them to you if you would have gave me a solution to stop me from having a foreclosure on my credit report. There was no emotional attachment for me. If you would have came around, I would have gave you those properties to you. I couldn't figure it out. The house that I made close to a million dollars, the owner didn't want the house. She had no emotional attachment to those properties. She didn't want to deal with tenants, toilets, trash, Home Depot, loads of contractors. One more house that I was given to me for free, I put a sign on a telephone pole across the street from where I'm living at right now. I was looking for motivated sellers right where I live at. I got a call from an owner whose son was living in the house. He couldn't make the payments. The house was in foreclosure. The deal was done because the owner had debt. Two house payments. Making one house payment is enough to break most people, let alone two. She lived in the San Francisco Bay Area and she couldn't make two house payments, you guys. She gave that property to me for nothing so I could take it off her hands. Another free house. I made somewhere between twenty-five dollars to $30,000 from that free house. There was no emotional attachment. I was able to take over that property subject to the existing finance, which means what, you guys? Yes, I didn't need what? I didn't need any money, credit, a job, real estate license, deal with realtors, or get any loans from banks to acquire that property that was in foreclosure. You could have wholesaled it, fixed it, flipped it or rented it, just like I did to make big profits in real estate. And remember, I didn't need any money, credit, a job, real estate license, deal with any realtors, get any loans from banks to acquire that one property from that homeowner. So again, Takeaway number two, you guys, is called a free house. I've been given 10 free houses from homeowners that didn't want their houses. One million dollars of profits from one house, no emotional attachment to the property that you could sometimes take over again, subject to the existing finance. You don't need money, credit, a job, real estate license, deal with realtors, get any loans from banks to acquire these type of properties that are in foreclosure. But you do need the knowledge. You could have wholesaled it. Fix it, flip it, rent it, just like I'm doing to make big profits in real estate. Again, takeaway number two, you guys, okay? You want to market and deal with people who are having problems with the six Ds. The six Ds, again, are debt, debt, divorce, and distress. And when you deal with these type of people that are having problems with their homes, they will give you a discount on the property so you can make dollars. Homeowners dealing with the six Ds, they will give you their house for free. I did say free. Terry, why would someone give it to you? I already told you, okay? If it's never happened to you, I can see why you're skeptical, you guys, okay? I can see why you're thinking no one in their right mind will give you their house for free until you see it. And when it happens to you, I want you to call me and thank me. Again, you don't need any money, credit, a job, real estate license. You gotta deal with realtors, get any loans from banks to acquire these properties that are in foreclosure, okay? Again, flip it, wholesale it, rent it. Airbnb, assistant living, okay? To make your profits, again, I'll show you how this is done, you guys, okay? I've been doing this for 20 years all over the United States, okay? I've done it in California, Arizona, Nevada, Illinois, Florida, New York. This is Terry Bontemps, and I'm wishing you success, health, wealth, happiness, and prosperity again. This is takeaway number two. I got five more for you, so be on the lookout. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Take care, you guys. See you on the next one. Bye. I don't go to Home Depot. I don't go to Lowe's. <laughs> I don't paint that house. I'm not a landlord. I don't deal with tenants. I don't deal with toilets. I don't deal with trash. I don't deal with contractors. All the bank do is get a check, a check, a check. And again, you guys, I'm showing you why banks are the most powerful institutions in the world. These people, okay, are gonna pay me back $100,000. That's an interest, that's interest for the bank and it's my profit. And if you look at every single house in your neighborhood across the world where banks own these mortgages, that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly why banks got rich and are rich and the most powerful institutions in the world. Why don't you become a bank? Join them. All right, let's move on.
Again, I did not do foreclosure. I'm leading up to it because we're going to have an auction, you guys. All right, so step number eight, foreclosure costs. You got to understand when you buy notes, there's costs that are associated. You just don't only have the note. These are the risk of becoming the bank, okay? You got holding and management costs on the property. You may need to hire a bankruptcy attorney. This person may file bankruptcy. You need an attorney. You got to file uh, for, have a foreclosure attorney. You may have to pay a real estate agent's commission. So if this owner gave me the deed to the property, I'm going to turn around and sell it. I got to pay a realtor. I'm going to sell it for $230,000. I got to pay 6% to a realtor. That's $13,800 that's coming out of my profits because I'm using a realtor. Ah, see how I'm thinking through this process? I know every piece. Again, you guys, I keep telling you, you're trying to figure this out. You guys are here trying to figure out all these different things. And every time you turn it, every time you go to a seminar, every time you read a book, every time you're on a meetup group, every time you're on a webinar, you get more and more and more. I've got it figured out already. I already got the system. The wheel's already round. It's already round. <laughs> Am I having fun, right? So next, okay, there may be some repair costs on the property. Hey, it needs 10,000 worth of improvements. Okay, when I get that house back, I can make them or sell it for less value. How about taxes, insurance, closing costs? Okay, that first loan may be in foreclosure. And we're gonna talk about that when I do my auction. Now on this property, it was not in arrears the first payment they were making them they had enough money to make the first but they didn't make the second that's a nice place to be so let's go ahead and do this you guys let's talk about step nine this is the trustee sale auction what does this all this mean all this means is that we went through our exit strategies let me go back when i met the owner i said look can you refinance the house they gave an answer they can't can you sell the house no now again i'm making this up thinking through my situation this is not what happened but i'm thinking through all the things that could happen so i know my upside and my downside i know when i can risk and where i'm going to lose because that's important you have to think through everything how about deeding me the house in lieu of foreclosure? They go, no. How about doing a short sale with me? Give me less than what I'm owed. No. How about if I give you some cash for equity? No. How about we modify your loan? No. Wow, you're not giving me any choice, but I gotta foreclose. Terry, we don't like you. We don't like you, Terry. We don't wanna work with you. We don't care nothing for you. No, no, you suck, Terry. You shouldn't be able to own our mortgage. You were born <laughs> on the other side of the tracks. You this, you that, you this. No, 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 no. I ain't got no other choice. I gotta foreclose. So let's talk about me now foreclosing on the owner for non-payment, which is a right for me as the lien holder. I'm just like Bank of America. I'm just like Chase. I'm just like Wells Fargo. They will foreclose on you if you don't make your payments. I'm no different, you guys. The Bank of Terry Bontemps operates the same way. Let's have a trustee sale. Uh -huh. Welcome to the trustee sale today. The foreclosure auction on the courthouse steps. The starting bid is $140,000. The starting bid is $140,000. What am I saying here? I'm creating a scenario. The first lender may foreclose. I'm the second lender, you're the second lender. What happens if the first lender starts a foreclosure? What could happen at that auction? If you've never been to a foreclosure auction, you should go. And I'm hoping I'm showing you the process so when you get there, you're not lost. If you've already been there, this is the position I'm in as the lien holder. You guys probably haven't thought about the lien holders, what position they're in. I'm gonna help you guys with all that, okay? The trustee sale today, 
the value of that property again you guys got to remember is two hundred thirty thousand dollars okay there's four players four people that have an interest in this property four people that have money at stake in this property at the auction you have the first lender the second lender you have the homeowner and you have the real estate investor they all have stakes of money in this position so at the trustee sale the first lender says hey starting bid 140 140 does anybody bid 140 guess what nobody showed up at the auction so what happens the first lender okay gets the property back as an reo the second lender gets wiped out the homeowner loses their fifty thousand dollars of equity and the real estate investor because they didn't bid 141 thousand dollars let's say they lost ninety thousand of profits because they didn't show up for the sale so i'm going to put this on here so you guys can see it reo for the first lender second lender wiped out homeowner loses fifty thousand dollars of equity investor walks away from 90k boom show it again so you guys will see it and go back and learn it listen to what i have to say first lender gets the property it's reo real estate owned second lender they didn't show up so they get wiped out they lose everything the homeowner because they didn't solve their problem they lose fifty thousand dollars of their equity gone the real estate investor all they had to do was show up and bid one hundred and forty thousand one dollar they lost ninety thousand dollars for not showing up at the auction just on that one situation let's look at else what could happen i'm just throwing things out for you guys so you can see my intelligence here the first lender is still foreclosing starting bid is hundred and forty thousand but guess what someone shows up and bids a hundred and sixty thousand an investor bids a hundred and sixty thousand dollars what happens to the first lender second lender the homeowner the real estate investor now you guys got to understand this starting bid was 140 someone bid at 160 why was there a big jump because there was more than one investor bidding on this property if there was only one investor bid on the property all they had to do was bid one hundred and forty thousand one dollar but someone raised it up someone said 145 150 155 somebody finally stops at 160 so the bidding stopped at 160 the first lender would get their 140 the second lender will get 20 the homeowner gets zero the real estate investor that bought it for 160 will sell it for 230 and make seventy thousand dollars of profit i'll fill it in for you and i'll go over which one more time so you guys get this I've actually foreclosed as a second lender on real estate, on these notes that I've owned. So this is how I know what I'm doing, you guys. All right, so let's do this. Let you guys see the numbers and do the math. Again, somebody bid at 160, starting bid 140. The first lender gets the 140. The second lender gets 20. That's all they get. Now remember, the second lender was owed 40 but they're getting 20 they pay 10 some people may count that a good day depending on your strategy and how you think about money you were owed 40 you got 20 you took a discount that's why sometimes it's go ahead good to go ahead and discount it with the owner that way you're guaranteed to make it here you leave it up to the auction results may not turn out good the homeowner because they didn't solve their problem they lost their fifty thousand of equity that real estate investor that bid at 160 they make seventy thousand dollars of profit and i know i'm going fast i do know that i could take my time and go really slow we'd be here till tomorrow you guys and the next day boom starting bid 140 but guess what the bidding went up to two hundred thousand what happens to the first lender second lender homeowner real estate investor the first lender gets the 140 the second lender gets 40 the homeowner gets twenty thousand dollars but they were owed 50 because they didn't solve their own problem they only get 20. the real estate investor sells it for 230 makes thirty thousand dollars you guys Forty. Mm -mm. Homeowner gets twenty. 
investor makes 30 love the math love the math love the math love thinking through all this Woo! again the value is 230 that's how i get these numbers okay <clears throat> certain bid was 140 someone bid at 200 the first lender all they get is 140 that's all they're owed you and me as a second lender we can only get forty thousand dollars we cannot get any more we're legally owed 40 that's it you did deduct the two hundred thousand dollar was bid from the 140 and the 40 that leaves 20 for the homeowner again the homeowner was owed 50 but the bidding only went to 200 you pay the debt first what's left over is the homeowners the investor sells the property for thirty thousand dollars you guys that's the way the numbers pan out and you will see two hundred thirty thousand total between the first lender second lender homeowner and the real estate investor <laughs> there you go there you go there you go guess what the second lender Oh, the second lender is going to be foreclosing now. Uh-oh. That's going to get interesting. All right. Let's say now that the first lender again was foreclosing. And the homeowner was behind $10,000 on that first. I own the second. You own the second instead of me waiting and going to the auction as a second lender to see what happens if the first lender forecloses why don't i take control of the situation myself and make things happen so that i know for sure how to get the money out that i want i know you guys ain't following me but i'm just talking through what i do as a investor why don't i send ten thousand dollars of my money to the first bank pay them so that they're current and then why come i don't foreclose that's my rights as the second lien holder i have the right to protect my interest i can send ten thousand to the first and then i can be in control of the foreclosure auction there's a benefit to that it would take me too long for you to understand it's strategy and i'm not going to cover that so if I send ten thousand dollars of my own money, that means that I can take that ten thousand and add it to the forty thousand that I'm owed. So now I'm owed fifty thousand dollars by that homeowner. So guess what? The auction today is about the second lender. The first auction was about the first lender. Well, who has the highest priority, Terry? Both banks are treated the same. Whoever files the foreclosure first can do the auction first. If the second forecloses first, they can go to the auction. If the first forecloses first, the first can go to the auction. The first can file today, the second can file tomorrow. You could have an auction one day on the first and the next day will be an auction on the second. You gotta determine your strategy. See, this is why you guys need a mentor. Some of you are thinking, hey, look, I'm gonna learn all this from Terry and I'm gonna put it into action. I, I'm glad you are feeling that you can do that, but I'm gonna give you a caveat. You better understand everything because if you miss one thing in this puzzle, you're gonna lose your money, you're gonna lose someone else's money. Somebody's not gonna be happy. So there's an auction today. Welcome to the trustee sale foreclosure auction on the courthouse steps. The starting bid on this property will be $50,000, $50,000. And for the rookies and the amateurs, you're getting excited because you see a sale for $50,000, but you don't know there's a lot of things going on. It just ain't about the 50,000. That's just one interest. That's the second interest. Or what about the first interest? They're not going away. They got to be paid. They got to be paid. So again, it's going to take too long to explain it. Here we go. At the trustee sale, the second lender. Uh oh, I put 40,000. Let me go back a step. We did not send the 10,000 to the first bank. I'm ahead of myself. The first lender is current. The first lender is current. Just like in real life. I, the second lender, was behind. I was owed $7,725. That's when I bought it from the bank. So, I'm going to foreclose asking $40,000 at the auction. I'm the second lien holder. 
The opening bid is going to be $40,000. What happens at the auction if no one shows up? I'm foreclosing. I got to give you the answers. The first lender doesn't get anything, but they will have to be paid by me, the second lender. The second lender gets the property as a REO, so I now own it. The homeowner gets zero because they didn't do anything to solve their problem. A real estate investor gets zero because they didn't show up for the auction. If you're confused, you might go back and listen to it. Okay. The first lender is going to be paid by somebody. The second can pay it, or when the second sells the house, the person that brings the money in the, to the um, closing table will pay for the first. This gets real crazy, guys, but I love it. It's a beautiful game. It's a beautiful game. The best game in the world of real estate. 40, 90, that'd be one, 180, $50,000. All right, I'll explain to you guys. So again, I'm the second lender. When I bought the note from the bank, they were behind $7,725. I bought it for 10, that homeowner still owes me $7,725. They said they aren't gonna pay me, so I have to go to the auction and foreclose. Starting bid by me is $40,000. No one shows up. So here's what happens. The first lender, somebody's going to pay that first lender, whether it be me as the second, whether it be me selling the house and the new buyer will bring the financing to pay off that 140. The 140, the first lender never gets wiped out. The second lender who is me, I get the properties of REO. So I own it now. Okay. The homeowner loses their $50,000 of equity. A real estate investor, all they had to do was come to the auction, bid $40,001. If the real estate investor would have came to the auction, they would be responsible for the first. So that investor was could have paid $140, could have paid my $40, that would have been $180, and if they would have sold the property for $230, they would have made $50,000. Can you guys see the way this Ruby Cube just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. You're like, oh, I got a headache. I got to call someone to figure out what's going on. I need to call Terry Bond Temps. <laughs> Here we go. I'm starting the bid at 40,000. Somebody, some investor bid 60,000. Why? There was a bidding war going on. It got up to $60,000. What happens to the first lender? That real estate investor that bid at 60 is responsible for paying that first. It ain't going nowhere. It's got to be paid. Okay, and if they don't pay it, the first lender will foreclose on the property. Mm. Me as the second lender, I get my 40. The homeowner gets 20 because there's 20 left over. The real estate investor will buy it for a total of 200 grand, 140 on the first, 60 on my, or 40, yeah, 60 on the bid. They'll make 30,000 as a profit. First lender paid by investor. Second lender gets 40. Homeowner's gonna get 20 because there's 20 left over from the bid. The real estate investor is going to sell it and make 30 k All right, you guys, here's the results. If this particular situation happened, the reason I'm telling you guys this is because I do this before I buy a, buy a note. I plan all this out before I even buy the note so that I can go all the way through this process and I can anticipate what my profits are going to be. I won't know until we go all the way through the 11 steps. Again, starting bid 40 grand. An investor like you or anybody bid at 60. So the first lender is gonna get paid by the investor everything they're owed, which is at 140. I get 40, which I'm owed because I'm the second lender. And because that investor bid at 60, at my auction, when I was only asking 40, the extra goes to the homeowner. So the homeowner gets 20,000 again. They were owed 50. Now that real estate investor is gonna pay the 60 that they bid it, plus the 140 on the first, so that's a total of $200,000. They'll sell the property for 230. They'll make a $30,000 profit. The foreclosure auction is the most fairest process out there simply because 
the market determines what happens in the bidding process to this house. There's nothing fair than the foreclosure auction. The owner, they've got to figure out their problem to save their equity. The second lender has got to figure out a pro figure out the problem so that they can make a profit. The first lender is sitting good when there's equity. When there's equity, the first lender can sit back like the fat cat. A real estate investor who bids at auctions is looking for the opportunity to make money. So it's a very balanced scale that works out. And in this game, somebody wins, somebody could lose. But that's the process. Now, I did say the first lender was 10,000 behind. Now, as the second lender, I'm going to send that to the first lender. I'm going to send that to the first lender and I've already gotten rid of the paper about the auction. So, I can't tell you guys we're having an auction. We're having an auction. <laughs> All right, so here we go. The second lender is foreclosing. The first lender was owed 150, but we sent 10,000 to stop the foreclosure. I'm going to add the 10,000 to my 40, which means that I'm foreclosing for $50,000. I have that right to do that. Okay. So at the auction, I'm asking 50, nobody shows up. What happens? The first lender is going to get paid. Okay. By me, the second in this process. Okay, the second lender, I take the property back as an REO. The homeowner gets nothing because no one bid it on it. The real estate investor makes no money because they didn't show up and bid at the auction. Paid by a second. The second lender gets it as a REO, which I will sell for 150. I'll make an $80,000 profit. The homeowner gets zero. Investor could have bid it 190, so there should have been 40k of profit for the investor. <clears throat> Again, I'm asking 50 for my second. No one shows up. The first lender is going to get paid by me because in this process, I'm going to get the property as a REO, so I'm responsible for paying that first of 150. Now I only got, I'm sorry, 140. I only have 10 into the deal. And I got 10 that I sent to the lender. So we're into it for the 140 first, the 10 I sent to the lender, 10 I pay for, no, that's 160. Okay, I'm gonna sell it for 230. I'm gonna get everything back. So just say I owe the first bank, the 140, plus the 10 I sent in. I'm gonna get 80,000 above that, $80,000. Homeowner gets zero because no one bid it at the auction. Okay, they lose their $50,000 of equity. Real estate investor, if they would have bid it, all they have to do is pay off the first at 140, the 50 that we're asking there, that makes 190, what's left over 40 grand. If they would have showed up at the auction, you guys. Last one, last one, this is getting great. All right, so at the auction, I'm asking 50. Guess what, an investor bids 50. That investor is now responsible for paying the first. I get my 50,000 that I'm owed. The homeowner gets zero because there was nothing left over. That investor, they pay the 140 plus the 50 they bid at the auction, that's 190. They will make $40,000 when they sell the house for 230. Investor is responsible. The second lender gets 50, who is me. Homeowner gets zero. Investor's gonna make 40K. All right, you guys. Let's do one more. Again. Asking 50, someone bids 50. That investor that bid at 50 is responsible for paying the first. The second lender who is me, I will get 50,000 because that's what I was asking, that's my profit. The homeowner gets zero because there was no extra. The real estate investor that bid at 50, again, has to pay the first of 140 plus the 50 they bid it, that's 190. They will sell it for 230. They will make $40,000, you guys, 40 thousand dollars you must know what's happening at the foreclosure auction you must know which lien holders for closing you must be prepared and know your strategy 
I went over the four, or excuse me, the seven exit strategies, including what could happen at the foreclosure auction, you guys. Woo now your numbers are gonna be different for you. And you'll have to go through the same process, the same system that I have. I've already got the material created for you. I've already gone through the process. Everything you will need is already been developed for you. And I've been teaching it for the last 19 years. I'm gonna coach you, mentor you, train you, and support you 100%. And then you get on the phone, hey, Terry, this auction, what about this? Terry, could you look at my spreadsheets to make sure I'm not making any mistakes? You need me to help you not lose money. The value in that is incredible. I'm going to talk to you guys about my coaching program. Yeah, you've already I've already told you about the students that have made the type of money they've made. Some of you are going to need to find money for your deals. I already have the PowerPoint slides made for you to put on your projector, your computer, your webinar, to present your no deals. That comes with my digital course. If you're given a live presentation, a live presentation where people are in the audience, I have a matching handout that matches the PowerPoint that you can give to your clients okay I just went over the seven extra strategies I'll show you one page that's what it looks like as you're going through the presentation just like I gave you guys here's the presentation that your clients your prospects can be looking at while you're giving the presentations with all the information filled in except for the information for your deal told you guys about the KPIs. Oh, I love KPIs, the key performance indicators. Once you guys study this, you'll be able to match your deal side by side of the way me and my students are looking at analyzing our real estate deals. And you'll be able to look at your deal and say, yes, it's a go. No, I could lose. Or, and, hey, Terry, I'm looking at this and this foreclosure foreclosing or reinstating the loan i don't know if that's the best thing for me to do terry what would you recommend from your 19 years of teaching and your 40 years of experience and those 320 videos that you have on youtube and your student that made 1.2 million in one hour and your other student made 400,000 in nine months she increased her net worth 1.5 million dollars in 18 months she bought uh, uh, 18 notes in 10 months and she increased her net worth 1.5 million and she's making $2,100 a month on another one of her deals Terry what is your opinion your expertise <laughs> and I would say your gray hairs but you cut your gray hairs off <laughs> invaluable you guys invaluable the marketing the marketing that you use to help homeowners in foreclosure keep their home you can market to homeowners to help them keep their home if you feel led and that's where you want to go i've got all the marketing pieces bam there's your sign in foreclosure we can help you keep your home let's just say underneath this we buy houses someone that cannot make their mortgage payments if they seen the we buy houses or we can help you keep your home, who do you think they're gonna call? I believe they're gonna call the we help you keep your home because that's what they wanna do. We try to figure out if it's possible. It may not be possible, but you're gonna build a trust factor. And if they ever decide they do wanna sell their home, maybe they'll sell it to you because they know you, they like you, and they trust you. 
versus call the we buy houses people. They trust you because you've given them everything you can to help them, but it just doesn't work out. It doesn't pencil out financially. You're heart centered. You want to help these people more than you want to make the profit. What is note buying? I go into complete details of what note buying is and how it works. There's a whole digital course on that. One of my clients, the military veteran, I paid $60,000 to help him keep his home out of my own money. $60,000 of my own money. $60,000 of my own money for him to keep his house. Had a conversation with him. We were on the phone. He says, Terry, you know, all of those investors, I kept all the letters and information they left on my doorstep. I kept all that in a shoebox. And I'm like, whoa, man. I said, hey, what are you going to do with it? I'd like to have it. He says, well, Terry, you can have it. I said, great. Can you imagine the marketing, the variance of ideas, the campaign that some of these expert real estate investors sent to this military veteran. He kept it all. Now, what I've done, I've taken it and put it into this manual for you guys. 150 foreclosure letters, direct mail pieces, postcards, that's yours in my course. How valuable is that? Everybody's trying to get to this homeowner with a way for that homeowner to get on the phone and call him. Woo, that is valuable. My bank foreclosure millionaire. Okay, house flipping game. The instructions for how to learn how to buy and sell houses 11 different ways in my bank for culture in their game i'm gonna teach you wholesaling i'm gonna teach you fix and flip like they're doing hgtv i'm gonna teach you how to be a landlord how to make money as a landlord we're gonna do notes that's in there how to borrow money if you have no money how to borrow the capital to fund your real estate deals private lenders money partners again i told you guys find a money partner have the money partner put up all the money and you split the deals 50-50 just like in the banker movie. The Irishman, okay? Put up the money for Anthony Mackie, Bernard Garrett, character he plays, to go out, find deals. The Irishman put up all the money. They split the profits 50-50. This is an excellent way to do real estate if you have no money and no credit. But you got to learn how to find the deals. You need the knowledge. You can also get houses subject to if you have no money. Subject to means, hey, I'll just give it to you. Again, I told you guys, I have a client. I had a person. I was a door knocker. I knocked on the door and I said, hey, is John here? The lady said, John just passed away. John was the guy that loved all the real estate. I just want to spend time with my grandkids. I said, you know what? I'd like to have these two houses on one lot. Can I have them? Can I have the two houses that you're going to get at the bank? Why don't you give it to the bank of Terry Bonds? I, I want them. Could you give them to me, please? She said, yes. She didn't ask me for no money. She was a seller that didn't want to have anything to do with tennis, toilets, trash, contractors, Home Depot, and Lowe's. All she wanted to do is spend time with her grandkids. She gave me the houses for free. She didn't ask any money. I've got those houses rented out right now. Two houses on one lot. I get $2,100 a month from the house that she gave to me and asked no money. The houses were $8,000 behind. I borrowed the $8,000 from my dad. That was a no money down deal. I got a lot of experience of doing no money down deals. How you can do real estate without any money. Those two houses are worth $400,000 right now. That lady, that lady, when her husband passed away, she didn't care about the value of the house today. She just cared about her grandkids. She was emotionally tied to her grandkids. All she wanted to do was spend time with her grandkids. This property brings me in $2,100 a month now, and it's worth 
$400,000 because she gave it to me. There are people out there, you guys, that'll give you houses. You just gotta ask for it. What do you wanna do with your house? What do you wanna do with your house? Do you wanna keep it? Do you wanna sell it? Do you wanna give it away? If it's in foreclosure, maybe I can buy the note. That's how you're gonna make money during COVID-19. Death, death, debt, distress, and divorce. Death, debt, distress, and divorce. We'll get you a discount so that you can make some dollars. That's what I've been talking about all week for the five days. Talk about my digital course now. 40,000 profit in one hour. That's what we've been doing all week. How I made $40,000 on this one deal that we've been talking about. I sent you through the process. There's two manuals that go into details about this one deal. This is the case study. This is the analysis. This is the house that I kept the homeowner in the house because I wanted the $454.42 so that I can make $100,000 on the deal. I wanted that monthly payment for those 220 payments. I helped that homeowner key their house. I also paid $60,000 for a military veteran so that he can keep his house. And it's part of the course that you guys get. Last but not least, the forms and the documents that I've used in my transactions across the United States. The documents and the forms that are necessary. What a course. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the most important thing you guys what is the most important thing the most important thing is hey Terry I've got a question okay let me teach you two times a week I'm gonna teach you and walk you through this step by step so that you understand it I'm gonna answer your questions two times a week eight times a month a hundred times in a year I help, I hope this will help your success. And if you do what you're supposed to do, if you work hard, if you're motivated, if you're dedicated, if you're ambitious, and if you work, you're gonna have questions. I'm gonna help you with those questions, those homeowners, those banks, the questions you can't answer, call me and I'll support you. That is the most important thing that you can have is my phone number. I will pick up the phone to help you. What does that cost? The cost is $1,495. $1,495. $1,495 for one whole year of two calls a week, eight calls a month, 100 calls in a year, plus the digital course plus my Bank Foreclosure Millionaire app to where I teach you the strategies and the formulas. You go into the app and you practice. It helps you with your math. So when you go out into the real world, you are confident, your self-esteem is high, and you know how to make offers that will make you a profit. So I will coach you, teach you, train you, support you, and then give you a business simulator to work all this in so that you have a higher chance of success. Now, I'm only looking for 10 people. I've already got one person enrolled. I need nine more people, and here's what happens once I get the nine. Once I'm finished with the nine people, it's done, it's over. That 1495 will not come back for one-on-one -on -one training. You will not be able to get it any longer for $14.95 to me to train you one-on-one. -on -one. That program will be $44.95. $4,495 for a one-year program, two calls a week, eight calls a month, 100 calls a year. Why? I just don't have the time to work with everybody on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I can't work with everybody. So I'm gonna move the price up four times. I'm a 4X <laughs> my enrollment. You can get 1495, but it's gonna be in a group session. That's where you have many 
to one, group as many to one, is still an incredible value. Because I deliver content. I deliver. I have high expectations. I raise my level. Always. I'm constantly exceeding, adding more and more and more and more to this program. So it can be the best ever educational training program teaching financial education teaching financial literacy to girls boys men women so again 1495 for the first nine people after that you can still have 1495 but it's for group many to one on a phone call just like i'm doing right now on a live stream where everybody can watch and attend okay and i'll take questions It's Terry Bontemps. Hey, let me tell you guys about a five-day seminar I attended in Jacksonville, Florida. And the guy that was teaching the class had bought and sold over 2,000 houses. That's why I was there. He taught me that if I got really good at the foreclosure business, I would have enough business to last me for the rest of my life. Not only that, but I would have enough business for my daughter's lives, okay? Wow, that was freaking impressive. Wow, what he told me was absolutely right. To this day, I have 20 years experience investing in foreclosure properties all over the United States, you guys. I've invested in California, Arizona, Nevada, Illinois, Florida, and New York. Here's what I'll tell you about what I've learned from my years of investing experience that works and will continue to work even after the foreclosure moratorium is lifted. Matter of fact, it's going to work even better when the moratorium is lifted. You want to market and deal with people who are having problems with the six D's. Terry, what are the six D's? The six D's are death, debt, divorce, and distress. And when you deal with these type of people that are having problems with their homes, they will give you a discount on their property so you can make some dollars. Let me say that again, you guys. That's death, debt, divorce, and distress. When you deal with these type of owners, they will, and they have a house problem, they will give you a discount on the property so you can make the dollars. Well, how much dollars, Terry? One million dollars from this property because of debt. I knocked on the door of a foreclosure property and asked the lady, hey, was John here? She said, no, John just passed away. I said, well, sorry to hear that. I asked, what are you gonna do with those houses, those two houses on one lot that John owned? She said she was gonna give them back to the bank because she didn't want them. I told her, I asked her, I said, I would like to have them. She said, Terry, you make up them back payments, you can have those houses. The houses were $8,000 behind you guys. I didn't have the money. So what did I do? I bought it from my dad and I took over the loan subject to. That was in 1999. That property was owed 64,000. It's well worth $600,000 today and I've collected over $360,000 of rents. That's called a free house. I've been given 10 free houses that homeowners didn't want. They just gave them to me. I didn't need any money. Credit, a job, real estate license. I didn't have to deal with realtors or get any loans from banks to acquire this property that was in foreclosure. You could have wholesaled it, fixed it and flipped it, or rented it just like I'm doing to make big profits in real estate. And remember, I didn't need any money. Credit, a job, a real estate license, deal with realtors or get any loans from banks to acquire this property that was in foreclosure. So takeaway for today, number one is you want to market and deal with people who are having problems with the six D's. The six D's are debt, debt, divorce and distress. And when you deal with these type of people that are having problems with their homes, they will give you a discount on that property so you can make some dollars, you guys. Let me show you the actual numbers on this deal that the owner didn't want because of a death in the family. I bought this property again in 1999, 64,000. Today, it's well over $600,000, you guys. 640 was the month payment back then. It's $2,100 now. I own this property free and clear. I have no debt. The average rent that was collected on this property is $16,440 for those 20 years that I've owned it, those 20 weird years that I've owned it. That's over $361,000, you guys. Wow, rental income for this free house, okay? 
So again, $16,440, okay? Over 21 years, that's 361,000. Today it's worth 600,000. That's almost a million dollars, okay? From that one property, you guys. Wow, so I'm generating <clears throat> generational wealth. Again, $961,000. I got this in a revocable trust. I'll never sell the property. I'm gonna give it to my daughters, okay? So they can have some wealth and some cash flow. And this is just one house, you guys, one house. And again, I didn't need no job. I didn't need no credit. I didn't need to have a real estate license. I didn't have to deal with realtors. I didn't have to go to no bank, okay? The thing you guys need is the knowledge. You're gonna need the knowledge in order how to do this, okay? So let's take a look at this, you guys. I made over $24,363 a year since I've owned this property of appreciation. It's gone up over $536,000. That's an R, whoops. <laughs> oh, I did that right. <laughs> Couldn't see it. That's an ROI of 38%, okay? A year ROI, you guys. Over 800% annual interest that I've earned on this property. Wow. Hey, you guys, this is Terry Bontis. Again, this is takeaway number one, you guys. We got more coming. I got seven total. Takeaway number one, Terry Bontis wishing you success, health, wealth, happiness, and prosperity. And I'll see you on the next takeaway. process the same system that I have I've already got the material created for you I've already gone through the process everything you will need is already been developed for you and I've been teaching it for the last 19 years I'm gonna coach you mentor you train you and support you 100% and then you get on the phone hey terry this auction what about this terry could you look at my spreadsheets to make sure i'm not making any mistakes you need me to help you not lose money the value in that is incredible i'm going to talk to you guys about my coaching program <laughs> yeah you've already i've already told you about the students that have made the type of money they've made some of you are going to need to find money for your deals. I already have the PowerPoint slides made for you to put on your projector, your computer, your webinar to present your no deals. That comes with my digital course. If you're given a live presentation, a live presentation where people are in the audience, I have a matching handout that matches the PowerPoint that you can give to your clients. Okay? I just went over the seven exit strategies. I'll show you one page. That's what it looks like. As you're going through the presentation, just like I gave you guys, here's the presentation that your clients, your prospects can be looking at while you're giving the presentations with all the information filled in, except for the information for your deal. I told you guys about the KPIs. Oh, I love KPIs, the key performance indicators. Once you guys study this, you'll be able to match your deal side by side of the way me and my students are looking at analyzing our real estate deals and you'll be able to look at your deal and say yes it's a go no i could lose or and hey terry i'm looking at this and this foreclosure 
foreclosing or reinstating the loan, I don't know if that's the best thing for me to do. Terry, what would you recommend from your 19 years of teaching and your 40 years of experience and those 320 videos that you have on YouTube and your student that made 1.2 million in one hour and your other student that made 400,000 in nine months, she increased her net worth $1.5 million in 18 months. She bought uh, uh, 18 notes in 10 months and she increased her net worth 1.5 million and she's making $2,100 a month on another one of her deals. Terry, what is your opinion, your expertise? <laughs> and I would say your gray hairs, but you cut your gray hairs off. <laughs> Invaluable, you guys. Invaluable. The marketing. The marketing that you use to help homeowners in foreclosure keep their home. You can market to homeowners to help them keep their home. If you feel led and that's where you want to go, I've got all the marketing pieces. Bam, there's your sign. In foreclosure, we can help you keep your home. Let's just say underneath is we buy houses. Someone that cannot make their mortgage payments, if they seen the we buy houses or we can help you keep your home, who do you think they're gonna call? I believe they're gonna call the we help you keep your home because that's what they wanna do. We try to figure out if it's possible. It may not be possible, but you're gonna build a trust factor and if they ever decide they do wanna sell their home, maybe they'll sell it to you because they know you they like you and they trust you versus call the we buy houses people they trust you because you've given them everything you can to help them but it just doesn't work out it doesn't pencil out financially your heart centered you want to help these people more than you want to make the profit what is note buying I go into complete details of what note buying is and how it works. There's a whole digital course on that. One of my clients, the military veteran, I paid $60,000 to help him keep his home out of my own money. $60,000 of my own money. $60,000 of my own money for him to keep his house. Had a conversation with him. We were on the phone. He says, Terry, you know, all of those investors, I kept all the letters and information they left on my doorstep. I kept all that in a shoebox. And I'm like, whoa, man. I says, hey, what are you going to do with it? I'd like to have it. He says, well, Terry, you can have it. I said, great. Can you imagine the marketing the variance of ideas, the campaign that some of these expert real estate investors sent to this military veteran. He kept it all. Now, what I've done, I've taken it and put it into this manual for you guys. 150 foreclosure letters, direct mail pieces, postcards, that's yours in my course how valuable is that everybody's trying to get to this homeowner with a way for that homeowner to get on the phone and call him Woo, that is valuable my bank for closure millionaire okay house flipping game the instructions for how to learn how to buy and sell houses 11 different ways in my bank for closure in their game I'm gonna teach you wholesaling I'm gonna teach you fix and flip like they do on HGTV I'm gonna teach you how to be a landlord how to make money as a landlord we're gonna do notes that's in there how to borrow money if you have no money how to borrow the capital to fund your real estate deals private lenders money partners again I told you guys find a money partner have the money partner put up all the money and you split the deals 50-50 just like in the banker movie. The Irishman, okay? Put up the money for Anthony Mackie, Bernard Garrett, character he plays, to go out, find deals. The Irishman put up all the money. They split the profits 
This is an excellent way to do real estate if you have no money and no credit. But you gotta learn how to find the deals. You need the knowledge. You can also get houses subject to if you have no money. Subject to means, hey, I'll just give it to you. Again, I told you guys, I have a client. I had a person. I was a door knocker. I knocked on the door and I said, hey, it's John here. The lady said, John just passed away. John was the guy that loved all the real estate. I just want to spend time with my grandkids. I said, you know what? I'd like to have these two houses on one lot. Can I have them? Can I have the two houses that you're going to get at the bank? Why don't you give it to the bank of Terry Bontemps? I want them. Could you give them to me, please? She said, yes. She didn't ask me for no money. She was a seller that didn't want to have anything to do with tennis, toilets, trash, contractors, Home Depot, and Lowe's. All she wanted to do is spend time with her grandkids. She gave me the houses for free. She didn't ask any money. I've got those houses rented out right now. Two houses on one lot. I get $2,100 a month from the house that she gave to me and asked no money. The houses were $8,000 behind. I borrowed the $8,000 from my dad. That was a no money down deal. I got a lot of experience at doing no money down deals. How you can do real estate without any money. Those two houses are worth $400,000 right now. That lady, that lady, when her husband passed away, she didn't care about the value of the house today. She just cared about her grandkids. She was emotionally tied to her grandkids. All she wanted to do was spend time with her grandkids. This property brings me in $2,100 a month now, and it's worth $400,000 because she gave it to me. There are people out there, you guys, that'll give you houses. You just gotta ask for it. What do you wanna do with your house? What do you wanna do with your house? Do you wanna keep it? Do you wanna sell it? Do you wanna give it away? If it's in foreclosure, maybe I can buy the note. That's how you're going to make money during COVID-19. Death, death, debt, distress, and divorce. Death, debt, distress, and divorce. We'll get you a discount so that you can make some dollars. That's what I've been talking about all week for the five days. Talk about my digital course now. 40,000 profit in one hour. That's what we've been doing all week. How I made $40,000 on this one deal that we've been talking about. I sent you through the process. There's two manuals that go into details about this one deal. This is the case study. This is the analysis. This is the house that I kept the homeowner in the house because I wanted the $454.42 so that I can make $100,000 on the deal. I wanted that monthly payment for those 220 payments. I helped that homeowner key their house. I also paid $60,000 for a military veteran so that he can keep his house. And it's part of the course that you guys get. Last but not least, the forms and the documents that I've used in my transactions across the United States. The documents and the forms that are necessary. What a course. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the most important thing you guys what is the most important thing the most important thing is hey Terry I've got a question okay let me teach you two times a week I'm gonna teach you and walk you through this step by step so that you understand it I'm gonna answer your questions two times a week eight times a month a hundred times in a year I help, I hope this will help your success. And if you do what you're supposed to do, if you work hard, if you're motivated, if you're dedicated, if you're ambitious, and if you work, you're gonna have questions. I'm gonna help you with those questions, those homeowners, those banks. The questions you can't answer, call me and I'll support you. That is the most important thing that you can 
have is my phone number. I will pick up the phone to help you. What does that cost? The cost is $1,495. $1,495. $1,495 for one whole year of two calls a week, eight calls a month, 100 calls in a year, plus the digital course plus my bank foreclosure millionaire app to where I teach you the strategies and the formulas, you go into the app and you practice. It helps you with your math. So when you go out into the real world, you are confident, your self-esteem is high, and you know how to make offers that will make you a profit. So I will coach you, teach you, train you, support you, and then give you a business simulator to work all this in so that you have a higher chance of success. Now, I'm only looking for 10 people. I've already got one person enrolled. I need nine more people, and here's what happens once I get the nine. Once I'm finished with the nine people, it's done, it's over. That 1495 will not come back for one-on-one -on -one training. You will not be able to get it any longer for $14.95 to me to train you one-on-one. -on -one. That program will be $44.95. $4,495 for a one-year program, two calls a week, eight calls a month, 100 calls a year. Why? I just don't have the time to work with everybody on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I can't work with everybody. So I'm gonna move the price up four times. I'm a 4X <laughs> my enrollment. You can get 1495, but it's gonna be in a group session. That's where you have many to one. Group is many to one. It's still an incredible value because I deliver content. I deliver. I have high expectations. I raise my level always i'm constantly exceeding adding more and more and more and more to this program so it can be the best ever educational training program teaching financial education teaching financial literacy to girls boys men women so again 1495 for the first nine people after that you can still have 1495 but it's for group many to one on a phone call just like I'm doing right now on a live stream where everybody can watch and attend okay and I'll take questions but it's much better to do 1495 hey Terry <laughs> will you talk to me personally one-on-one -on -one? again after I get my nine people it goes to 4495 you can still call me one one-on-one -on -one for 4495incredible phenomenal I look back on all these years I've been teaching and it's never been any better than today it's at its highest level right now mentally physically spiritually financially I'm at the top of my game the top of my game and I'm loving it I'm, I'm hoping to work with these uh, women organization this woman's organization to teach their members about financial education about financial literacy about building wealth about money about investing about real estate about living debt free about estate planning 30 countries six continents I have 50,000 real estate investors that a friend of mine has in emails we're gonna do the five-day training with them and they will not be able to get the prices that the first nine people will get they'll be 1495 in a group or 4495 one-on-one -on -one with me and I promise you I am not in this business to teach all day all night seven days a week I love my freedom I teach because I love it the students make me better Okay, as a instructor, and I love that part, but I am not gonna be 
I am not going to be the type of person that sits on the phone all day working with students because that's a real challenge. I'm giving you the opportunity to join one of the best programs out there, you guys, especially during COVID. That works, especially during COVID. It worked in 9-11. It worked in the Great Recession of 2008. It'll work in COVID. Every time there's a market, when the market crashes and it dumps, my program works extremely well. I also would like to write a book on teaching women financial education and financial literacy. There's a, you can Google this. It says that 61% of women would rather talk about their own death than talk about money. Google it. I didn't make that up. It's on the internet. Google it. 61% of women would rather talk about their own death than talk about money, which means there's 39% of women that want to talk about money how to improve their finances in life. That's who I wanna make a book for. I wanna make a book for kids, to teach kids financial literacy. I know for a fact right now, your children, they need to understand money, they need to understand real estate, they need to understand finance, they need to understand investing, because as they get older, it's demanded that people understand their money. You can't live in this world Okay? You can't live in this world without having some money. There's a lot of people in bad situations. Jobs are short. They got to know how to manage their money. So I want to build, a, make a book. And I want to try to drift my app into the kids so that I can teach them about finance, but I also could take that app that I have and teach them how to count money, how to add money, how to multiply money, how to take investments and see a return, how they can start their own real estate investing business similar to McDonald's. They can buy houses, they can earn money, they can be their own boss by having a real estate business. I'm so excited. I'm so excited because I see all these opportunities in a world where people are lost. They're like, wow, we're struggling financially. People are struggling financially because they don't understand ROI, how to get a return on their investment. I'm done, you guys. I can go on forever. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, this has been so much fun. I want to thank you for being with me. I want to thank you for allowing me to exceed myself in teaching. You rose the level of my teaching as a person. The rising tide lifts all boats. And I'm honored and I want to thank you for being here. I wish you the best. I'm wishing you health, happiness, success, and prosperity. It's been a real pleasure these five days. And if I can help you, if I can help you, and if you need a payment plan, my number is 916-470-3869. Monday, Monday is the, we're on the, I think we're on the ninth today, 10th tomorrow, 11th. Monday the 12th, Monday, October 12th, the 1495, for nine individuals goes away. After that, I'm not gonna honor the 1495 because I will be moving into the 4495 for that same program. $4,495 for the same program. Or you can go 1495 for a group, which does not include 101 with me. Thank you guys. I'm gonna give you a round of applause for taking the time to increase your financial intelligence. Again, if you don't know how money and wealth is built, you guys, if you don't know how to take an ROI, how to invest $10,000 of your own money and make it go to 54% so that you're making money while you sleep, or how you can go borrow how you can find a partner to put up money. If you don't learn these things, you guys, it's gonna be hard for you to have any money, any wealth, any money in your account because you're gonna be living paycheck
to paycheck. You're going to be working for money instead of money working for you. And as we get older, that's when you'll see that life is very difficult. Take care, you guys. Pleasure.